Last session, you guys have arrived at Jahaka Anchorage to look for dragon bait and possibly find a ship that can cut along the wild coast and get you guys to Omu quite quickly. Upon arriving at Jahaka Anchorage, the pirates there, um, they uh, created the facade that they are in fact just merchants. Um, but you, could, you soon uh, came to realize that in fact they were pirates and learned that they're actually not just pirates, but uh, they're also giving a cut of their spoils to the Flaming Fist. And in return, they're not, uh, they're kind of given immunity from all of the, uh, the, the, the Navy in the area. So uh, they're allowed to operate in this manner in the secret sea cove. Um, you guys had a conflict with the pirates, ended up uh, finding Bryn, who was uh, basically taken by shills and um, he was going to be forced um, to, to work on the ship for free for several months, similar to uh, what the other pirates were going to do to you guys. Um, but all in all, you guys managed to come to an agreement with Captains around Al Syrak, and he told you that there are actually three ships that operate in the Jahaka Bay. There's the Emerald Eye, there is the Dragon Fang, and uh, what was the name of the other ship? I completely forgot. The Sturge. So, you guys uh, learned that Captain Zoran was actually the captain of the Emerald Eye, but he uh, he was basically demoted as a mutiny and uh, he was left mainly to just kind of tend to the boats in the Jahak Anchorage. He said that he wants to get his Emerald Eye back and to do that you guys would need to capture another ship named the Dragon Fang, which uh, you guys did. And uh, with the Dragon Fang captured you believe you have the firepower now to take on the Emerald Eye. He also warned you of another ship called the Brazen Pegasus, which belongs to the Flaming Fist and uh, operates out of Port Nine Zaru. And uh, it's uh, it's quite quick and uh, should be on the lookout for that too, because uh, although it doesn't really have the firepower to uh, take down the Dragon Fang, it, it could at least uh, follow you guys and uh, outrun you if needed. And then you know, they could alert the Navy or whatnot and a fleet could be sent to take you guys. So uh, you're trying to be quick. You've sailed for about a day out of the coast and uh, you just uh, had a little bit of trouble from a few little dinosaurs flying around, some scavengers just trying to pick at you guys. Um, you took them out and a short while later, you guys have spotted the Emerald Eye. And uh, you can presume that the Emerald Eye knows that you guys are hostile. Right, there was uh, the Emerald Eye was just kind of waiting around this small mini peninsula and uh, it spotted you guys and you spotted it about the same time and uh, because of that peninsula as you've come around the side of it you're actually in quite close proximity. Um, you've been sailing a little bit closer and you're basically in range for like Mangonels and Ballista now. And uh, yeah, so the ship is about 300 feet away from you guys. So you guys are here on the Dragon Fang. I'll just uh, remind you guys during combat, the ships take their own initiative and uh, you can take one of three actions if you've got a full crew. And then you guys can also fire these weapons if you want with your turns or do whatever else you usually do. Uh, if you want to fire a blister, it takes three actions, one to aim, one to one to load, sorry, one to aim and one to fire. And a mangonel takes two actions to load and two actions to fire. And a mangonel cannot be shot at anything within 60 feet because, I mean, it's basically a giant slingshot, so. And uh, these different components of the ship can also be attacked. The helm, the sails, the blister, and the mangonels. All right, Zaroom, initially he said that uh, he, he, like, he cared for his crew um, but, uh, you feel like maybe that's changed slightly in the presence of having a full crew to man the dragon vein now. So, uh, he just says, uh, yeah, 
Try not to damage the hull of the Emerald Eye too much. And if you can leave some of the officers alive, that would be great. But if you can take out that fancy pants, Captain Laxalar, as early as possible, that would just be great. So, uh, looking aboard the ship, I mean, you can only see small figures from this distance because you're several hundred feet away. But you know where the helm is and you can kind of make out the, the form of the captain, although uh, in not very much detail. And what was that? Sorry. Very dashing. He is. <laughs> All right. They've got a, a crew of twenty as well, plus some extra. They've got some officers and whatnot too. So, as uh, Captain Zarum spots the Emerald Eye, he just says, uh, "Man, the Mingadels, I'm the Ballistas. Take her." And we'll just roll initiative straight away. All right, uh, let me, who's here now? We've got everyone here except for Avon and Petra. Okay. All right, Avon and uh, Petra, I'm gonna roll them into initiative and basically I'll leave it up to you guys to decide what they do, but uh, they'll be limited to either shooting the Mangonel or the Ballista. And the uh, all of the crew, they're basically going on the ship's turn. So they're not going to be in initiative. Yeah, sorry for coming up a bit late. No problem. Okay, I think everyone's in there. There's Captain's room. Captains can uh, take a special order as well. As you guys saw, they can say take aim and that gives the next person advantage on their attacks. All right, so the idea is to just uh, try and capture this ship, not completely destroy it, try and leave some crew alive. You're gonna need Aww. 20 in total, including yours and theirs. But uh, I mean, you guys, uh, you make up the majority of the officers on this ship really, so kind of up to you guys how that plays out and uh like the promotion from deck scrub to uh officer <laughs> yeah officer i said that with quotation marks <laughs> right all right uh so uh millhouse you're up first I will aim the ballista. All right, you just need to move back five feet because uh, difficult terrain to go through, Jasmine. Uh, then I won't aim the ballista. I will prepare to aim the ballista. We can still get within close enough, close enough range for that. All right, the ballista is already loaded, so uh, yeah, you can aim it, and you don't have to aim it at a particular person either. All right, you see this uh, cackling sea witch. Um, I mean, a few hundred feet away, so she looks pretty small from this this distance. And but uh, you can hear her cackling, <laughs> and uh, you see her cast a spell, and this ice, this kind of light blue aura, surround her once more. All right, uh, just in case uh, you're not aware, it's actually uh, the ship's turn now. Mill house. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fix these layers up. <laughs> All right, uh, so it's uh, it's completely up to you guys what the ship does. It has three actions, and you guys decide as a group what happens with those three actions. We should turn the ship thirty-five degrees, maybe. I mean, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon we aim cannons. to disable their weapons be the go-to wouldn't it uh yeah let's go for the weapons first is it easier to hit the ship when we are closer because in that case we should move closer as well um yeah i think it, it would be depending on your range um so ballistas at disadvantage beyond 120 
and the Manganel is at disadvantage beyond 200. So yeah, both of those attacks would be at disadvantage. Can you hold attacks? You can ready in action. So you said that the Ballista is... All it needs is an action to fire it. Can we use an action to load and ready the Manganel? On the ship's turn, it, uh, it has these actions. So it can take three actions. Oh, gotcha. And uh, basically it only takes a single, um, it gets three actions. It only takes one action to fire the blister because you've got a crew of 20 people operating these I weapons. See. Then how, how about, how do you guys feel about moving closer for our first action, firing the ballista and then firing the mangonel as the ship's actions? Yeah, sounds good. I don't, no, I don't reckon we move closer because even if we move closer, we're not going to get in to um default range the 200 range for it and, and that's turn. just going to give no but that's just going to give them the opportunity to get closer right. and Could... get non disadvantage on us if Fair we point. turn the mangle will be closer because if you be turning the because the mangle on the back of the ship they're like they're 350 feet away mangnel can fire up to 800 feet it's just at disadvantage yeah then let's stay here fire the Meganel twice and the blow is the once. All right. The wind is actually blowing um, south. Uh, sorry, it's blowing north as well. The wind's blowing this way. So uh, you're not, you wouldn't be sailing into the wind or against the wind. You'd just be uh, 45 feet of movement with the dragon thing if you were to move. So three attacks, anybody against? I guess you want to start unloading? Yep. yep. Let's do it. Yep. Alright, what are you aiming at? You've got, you can aim at the ship, the crew members, the helm, the sails, the blister, or their mangonel. Surely it would. They have a ballista, that's unfair. <laughs> but sh if we do, sure. if we fired at the helm, is there like splash damage on the mangonel that it would also hit the captain? No. It would just smash the... He'd be, like, basically jumping out of the way. Gotcha. And I assume we can't, like... If we say the crew, we can't, like, specify. These aren't, like, precision weapons or anything. No. If you uh, if you hit a crew, um, you'd basically just kill one crew member. Or you could target the officers. The then let's go for their weapons, yeah. And then, again, uh, if you have an AoE spell... The AOE spell will k and target the crew. You'll kill one d six crew members per spell level. So like a third, like a fireball would kill three d six of their crew. So yeah, let's fire third Manganel. All right, Manganel first Manganel. Is that the plan? Yep. Yep. Go for it. Yep. Whoever wants to take control of that. It's up to you guys who want bones to roll. Alright, uh oh, you let loose every time, one massive rock, but uh it was a very well uh like a very accurately aimed rock. It just fell short a good hundred feet. <laughs> Splashes into the water about here. That Next. was a warning shot. <laughs> You've got two left if you're using all three actions to fire the Manganel. All the crew are quickly loading up another gigantic rock. Heave! Heave! She's aimed! <laughs> Massive rock smashes into their Manganel, holding their ship slightly and uh, doing a little bit of structural damage. It kind of just clipped the Manganel. The crew quickly hoists another gigantic bolter, bolt, boulder, sorry, rolling it into the slingshot of the mangonel, hoisting it back. Fire! Woo! <laughs> the rock splashes into the ocean. More seawater sprays upwards as that rock misses. Kind of hit around here. And that will be your three actions. All right, uh, you can see this uh, very brawny looking man. He is uh, extremely 
muscular. He looks like your Dwar Cholton gladiator. And uh, he kind of, he just comes up to the bow of the ship and uh, just stands there eyeing you guys off. All right, some smoking of the- a cigarette? <laughs> He's not smoking a cigarette. Not this, not this guy. This ain't Ragda. All right. Uh, the, uh, some of the crew members here that are not actually operating the weapons or the sails or whatnot are armed with light crossbows. There are four of them. And uh, they start raining down crossbows at you guys. They're gonna fire one, these are at disadvantage, one at Millhouse. There's very little chance of these crossbow bolts hitting you guys from this distance, but it's still possible. And that's a miss. They're gonna fire one at Orion and completely misses. And another bolt just whizzes across the ocean and it clips you, Orion, for five piercing damage. And uh, another one's gonna fire at you, Orion, and that misses. Brim. Right. Um, well, I, I just checked. My light crossbow only has a, a disadvantage range of 320, so I think if we're 350 apart, that won't work. If you get right up to the bow, you could uh, feasibly fire it. You, like, you literally have to, like, like, they were literally 320 feet away <laughs> fired that. Okay. Well, I don't have much else I think I can do. If if so, uh, yeah. if you didn't want to do that, what um, you could also start to work the mangonel oh, if you okay. like. We have to reload the thing, right? Yeah, it takes four of uh, four actions from you guys, but uh, I mean, you could get Avon and Jasmine, um, Avon and Petra to come and help you with that too, if you like. No, I'm, I, I think we need four people to do that, so uh, I will help. Maybe okay. there's someone else who has something better that I can do at this range. Okay. Yeah. All right, you start uh, to help to load the Mingonel, working with the crew and whatnot to get these siege weapons shot quicker. Right. And uh, any bonus oh. action? Um, no, I don't think. Is, it, is anyone low that I can see? I don't think so, I'm, right? I'm looking quite low. I don't know what's happened to me. Not really. <laughs> from last time, of course. It might have um, been from the dinosaurs. Okay, I'll, uh, let's see, because <clears throat> I, I have to see how many spells I have from last time as well, of course, because I used use some of them. Oh, not that many, so I think. Um, okay, I'll do a healing word. I think I have to click the thing at first level, yep. Thank you. Get better soon. <laughs> oh, I already am. Get well soon. <laughs> All right, uh, and then if your turn is done, hit the end of turn button, and we'll go over to Jasmine. What right. is that thing? If you uh, look in the chat box, the, with that big purple box, there's that small little pink EOT button. Also, uh, the other one, you need to have your token clicked, and then it'll be in the top right. left-hand corner. There's two of them. Oh, when it's, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a token action, so okay. it doesn't show up if you don't have the token selected. All right, Jasmine. Right, I, uh... <clears throat> yeah, I, uh... Move up to about there, and, um... Shoot with my... Longbow at one of the bandits. Okay. Yeah. Closest guy. Yep. All right. I think you'll uh, you'll be at disadvantage. I'm perfectly fine with that. Are right, you just draw back on the arrow and you do a very high arcing shot the arrow just whizzes all the way across the ocean reaching its peak in the middle of the two ships 
and it starts to angle downwards. <laughs> Hit. The arrow sticks into the bandit. Alright, it, it must have just glanced him because he moves a little bit, but he's still standing. Yeah. Well, you definitely Say him again. Are you let loose another arrow, and that's another hit. The arrow does the same thing, only just catching him. Um, but this time, actually, uh, it looks like it's stuck stuck into his leg or something because he's struggling and uh, wincing in pain. He's almost. Drop to the ground from that arrow. You take a third shot, but uh, this time a wave hits the, the hull of the dragon frame and uh, it knocks your aim well off course. The arrow just sinks into the ocean. You hit a fish though. You hit a fish though. <laughs> well, whoever gets there first has got a nice fish to cook up. <laughs> Uh, you can hear them yelling out, Surgeon! And the surgeon is here, the deck priest. He's going to uh, start to run over and give triage. Uh, you see uh, there is yeah, a cleric on board slash surgeon. And uh, he just uh, rips the arrow out of that guy and this glowing energy surrounds his hand, um, surrounds his hand and seems to recover that guy's wounds. Orion. Uh, I'll yell out, we don't care about the bandits, go for their officers. And I'll, uh, with my longbow, I'll go for the, uh, the eye of the deep if I can, if I can see her. Okay. Oh, yeah, she's got some special uh, icy armor on her as well. I am intimately familiar with it. <laughs> I see. Aren't we all? I'm more saying that because I forgot to give her the temp hit points. <laughs> all right, uh, it's a narrow miss. The arrow sticks into the deck of the Emerald Eye. Hey, watch it! The captain yells out. <laughs> you see the arrow break through some of her icy mantle. That feels good. This captain, uh, who's looking at you guys through a spyglass. He just uh, whoosh, reduces the spyglass down to fit in his pocket, and uh, he kind of just yells out, Ha <laughs> Captain Zaroom! I was wondering how long it would take you before you turn on your own crew. <laughs> I'm looking forward to putting an end to your whining once and for all. Men, take aim! And he uses the take aim action. Right, there's a little gnome aboard <laughs> and uh, she's a deck wizard so she's got some spells that she's gonna start flinging but uh, I don't think she's in range actually so she just does she just does her uh, <laughs> maneuver for now some action or... <laughs> but she does cast me armor on herself <laughs> that, uh, that's a free action isn't this the same, uh, I was, yeah, I was going to say, is this the same deck wizard that dislikes, um, Millhouse, or is it the one that is on our shit that dislikes Millhouse? It couldn't be the same one, because she's back at Jahak Anchorage, so it might be her sister or something. Maybe they're twins. Mm. She does have the same sort of chuckle. All right, uh, they, they return fire. And uh, they're going to shoot at your sails. They're going to fire ballistas at your sails. Three massive harpoons <laughs> all fly towards your sails. First one was at advantage too because of the take aim action. So that is a crit. And the sails are getting shredded. The sails take... 47 damage from the first ballista that just rips straight through them. There's a gaping hole in them. Another ballista bolt rips through the sails for another 20. 
and a final ballista harpoon shreds the sails. The sails are almost completely useless now. And that's going to be very bad news if you don't have sails. Well, we only need the other ship, so. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, there are rowboats aboard too, so you can row over later if you need it. All right. The bosun is just uh, like the carpenter, the boat swain. Is uh, they're usually tasked with organizing the cargo and crew, and they're usually pretty good fighters. Um, this uh, bosun has a boarding hammer, and they're just like starts uh, hammering the mangonel better, <laughs> starts hitting the mangonel with the hammer. Uh, a component of it must have got a bit bent or buckled or something from that rock. And uh, is yelling at some of the crew to like, you know, make sure the ship's not hold and whatnot. Doing, they're basically just doing their job. First mate is uh, also, uh, you yeah, know, no nonsense sailors. They, uh, they, you know, the first mate's usually uh, convening with the captain directly and uh, trying to keep the morale up uh, with the, the crew. So he's just like yelling out orders and stuff, organizing all the crew members. Yazo. So, um, dwarf. So, can I grab a hammer and start knocking some shells back together? <laughs> With a hammer. The answer to that is no. <laughs> I do have a hammer. Yeah. landing That'd be quite handy right about now. This is something you're going to want to do after combat when you're not uh, when your life's not being immediately threatened right so what can what can i um what can i do you can do you just sit there and look pretty <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, go to the bow of the ship grab jasmine and uh, grab onto her waist and hold her out to the bow and start seeing titanic um, oh you can, can uh, short bow? Okay. yeah i think a short bow uh has got that yeah, well, you're not close you enough. You might be coming up a bit short on that. Yeah. yeah, so you can use an action along with Avon and Petra to uh, fire the ballista if you can get there. Yeah, you can, uh, well, yeah, you well, can... Well, I'll take aim. Can I take, <laughs> say take aim? You can help with the Manganel. You won't make it to the ballista. But Manganel's here. He's going to give me a mop. Yeah, you're, you're not the captain, so you can't tell, say it, tell everyone to take aim. But uh, <laughs> okay. gonna, you can okay, help I'll with the Manganel. All right. All right, you and Bryn have managed to load a rock into the Manganel now, in between the other crews also working it. All right, Captain's Room says, Yeah! Take aim at that bitch's face! <laughs> and he points to the other captain. All right, Avon, uh, I'll leave it up to you guys how Avon and Petra take their actions. Um, but they'll be limited to either loading the blister or the Manganel. But Petra do um, Eldritch Blast, surely. Well, they can both fire the Meganel. If they both work together, they can actually fire it on, on Petra's turn. Petra might have the range for Eldritch Blast. No, she's. it doesn't go up to 320 feet, unfortunately. Does she have Eldritch Spear? That would get it up to 240. Gotcha. Spell yeah. Sniper? If she had Spell yeah. Sniper and Eldritch Spear, yes, but she doesn't. But uh, yeah, their actions are limited to either firing the Manganel or the Ballista. The Manganel, she goes. All right, yeah, Manganel. All right, they they head on over, and uh, using both their actions, the Manganel is locked, loaded, and ready to fire. Uh, the attack will be at advantage. So, oh, well, uh, you can do the honors, Bryn, since you're the one standing right there. Who do you want to shoot at? Well, I mean, we don't want to destroy the ship, so can we aim at the captain with yeah. this thing? I guess not sure. <laughs> okay, well, let's try that. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen to the ship when we aim for the captain, though. We're going to win. Yep. Gonna happen. Unless you're putting holes in the hull, it's not actually going to... Uh... I mean, at worst, it's just going to destroy the deck a little bit, but it's not going to do any uh, structural damage. Right. I lost the ship somewhere. Is it this one? 
Uh, nope, that was Ballista. You uh, need to go to the ship's character sheet. That Ballista macro is just a... You shouldn't really have access to that one at the moment. I mean, it's the same as a Ballista, but... That was from a different yeah. encounter. It's a Manganel. So so... Yeah. Found it. Fire the Manganel! Alright, so, so you had advantage, so you're not at disadvantage. And uh, this giant rock... <laughs> the captain jumps out of the way. The rock seems to clip his arm. And uh, he lets out a shill scream. Yeah! <laughs> As uh, the rock just kind of breaks through the deck a little bit. Uh, the captain yeah, does not drop, though, from the 35 damage. Okay, Millhouse. Right, so I aimed the ballista last time, so I'm going to shoot. Um, yeah, shoot at the captain, I suppose. Uh, yeah, go for it. It's ready to, to shoot. Starts off loaded. Shoot. The captain does have cover as well. Like basically, everyone's getting, depending on where you are, you, most people are getting half cover from the fore deck and whatnot, and the rails and whatever, whatever else. Give cover. You uh, send a bolt whizzing over, and it like you pretty much give give him a haircut. It was that like, close to hitting him. But uh, it just whizzes straight on by the ship, <laughs> splashing into the ocean. Close. Uh, that'll be me done. <laughs> you can hear this sea hag. Well, not actually a sea hag, but this hag cackling away. And she casts another spell on herself. Alright, uh... So, uh, just so you know, Milhouse, it's a Dragon Fang's turn. You know, this is what... I, I tried out that video game, and I had no idea when it was a ship's turn. So I'm glad this <laughs> beach has been brought into Roll20. Wait, how did that get back? Go away! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's for the visually impaired. Okay, Dragon Fang. Captain says, uh, <laughs> We got him with his stupid face! Get his stupid face again, the captain says. But keep his face somewhat intact so people can recognize him when I cut his head off and dangle it from the mast. <laughs> Is taking just for the first shot? Ah, uh, yeah. Only for the first one. Right. Uh, so so how many Manganel things we, can we do now? With Because uh, we just we fired three. both the Manganel and the Ballista, right? The, uh, well, that's the thing. The crew are 20 people. So as long as you've oh, right. got 20 crew, you can always take those three actions. You guys are helping right. out because yourselves to contribute even more. Right. So one at the okay. captain to what the Mangal L again? Let's do the Mangal L three times. I'm fine with that. No, one. Well, we have advantage on the captain. That, that shot was already shot. taken. That shot was taken just before, oh. when he hit the captain for the uh, 35 oh. bludgeoning. Alright, um, I vote free Manganel. Fire it there, Manganel. Fire at the Manganel! Captain Sorrel says. Okay. Well, if the captain says so, let's do it. Alright. Boom. Whoops. <laughs> First rock smashes into the Manganel. Second rock splashes into the ocean. One more. Who wants to take that one? And... <laughs> splashes into the ocean. Miss. Maybe I should take over for rolling for this shit. <laughs> New sure. one that's hit so far. <laughs> Alright, this um, gladiator type fellow, he uh, actually heads down the stairs and uh, into the fore. Forecastle. Usually that's where like the quarters master, quartermaster's office is or something. And he disappears from view. Just walks away. Alright, these uh, three crew members, they just keep on peppering you guys with their crossbow bolts. And uh, these will be at Jasmine. Four shots. 
disadvantage. First bolt hits you, Jasmine, for seven piercing damage. Second bolt hits you for seven piercing damage. These guys have got some good sea legs because they're being very accurate. Next bolt misses and fourth shot misses you. So a total of 14 piercing damage for you, Jasmine. And uh, they are just snapping more bolts into their crossbows. I need to take off some of these thugs because I converged them all into uh, 20 sailors. Okay, over to Brent. So they are using their crossbow, so I, I guess I can. You need so to try, uh, uh, get up near the bow, the though. Ship. Yeah, can I get there this turn? Um, 5, 15, 20, 25, 30. Mm, I don't think so. Uh, well, I think you're going to be short I... about 10 feet, unfortunately. Right. So I'll uh, I'll just go there anyway, because otherwise next turn I still can't. Um, what you could do um, is you could... Uh, like help load a rock into the mangonel and then I move do that first and then move yeah, yeah. i'll help uh, load the rock and then i'll move towards the front of the ship and take out my crossbow for next uh next round um let's see how i'm doing with spells could do another healing word someone look uh like they need it jasmine is peppered with arrows oh right Let's uh, give uh, Jasmine a healing word then. She's been assaulted and peppered. Exactly. <laughs> Joke of the night. That was amazing. <laughs> and there's a bit of lag, I think. I clicked it, but it didn't do much yet. It's kind of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I clicked on the healing word, but it didn't do anything. Um, well, I guess I'll roll, uh... Click it again. It might work if you try it again. Sometimes... Okay. It just doesn't work for some reason. Or usually it happens with me sometimes if you click it, or you think you click it. Or maybe it's just lagging. Yeah, it could be. It could be that there's, like, uh, five healing words being cast. Just a bit. <laughs> I, I don't mind that. Let me uh, click it and see if it's working. Did you select the spell level? Oh, right. That's just in somewhere. Yeah. A little... Uh... Yeah, I found it. It was just <laughs> get, get inside of the one. ship uh, screen. So <laughs> The ship was know. hiding it. All right. Uh, you're feeling a little bit better there, Jasmine. Cool. Okay. Well, that ends my turn. And did you move? Oh yeah, I moved uh, to the front of the ship. I have to do that, right? You Where can, am I? yeah. I, mean, I, I can do it for you. Oh, or wherever okay. you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, shout! Hey, so Bryn, dodge. Even though this is a really big map, there's still five foot squares, and I'm trying to keep uh, everyone kind of relative to One, each other. Two, three. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, because I zoomed out a bit because it's very big uh, yeah. map. To do. No problem. It's <laughs> fine. Okay. You stay out of the mine too. Okay, yeah, uh, Jasmine, you're up. Yeah, as a bonus action, I would also cast him word on myself. For an additional six. And then fire off a couple of shots at the Priest this time around. I'm still not why sh um, quite sure why your sheet is not tracking your spell slots properly, Jasmine, but uh, I'm not sure how to really fix that. It might be kind of broken. I'll see if I can do something about it. Alright, uh, you aim at the priest, and that bolt must have uh, just. Uh, oh no, that. Sorry, the arrow. Uh, it just narrowly missed him. They must have hit the blister or something, or hit the deck. Narrow miss. Last one. And another miss, the arrow falls short. Falls short. Yeah.
All right, the deck priest is uh... Let me just check the range of this. All right, he's just looking around and giving triage to anyone. He uh, he runs over here and he casts a spell and he he holds it. Does not unleash it yet. Looking towards the captain. Probably a healing spell. His hands are glowing green and he's like got his hands held out towards the captain. The captain's starting to run over towards him. Orion. Well, let's see if we can get him to, to drop that concentration. I'll, uh, I'll fire at him twice. With my longbow. First arrow misses. Hits the ocean. Second arrow also hits the ocean. It's hard sure. to angle an arrow that far accurately. Can I move up like against the railing here? And is there a way I can like take cover? Uh, like maybe crouch down or lay down? Is there a, is there a way to take just, cover from the... Just being there, the railing actually gives you cover. It's um... Where is it? Main deck. So yeah, railing. It has a three foot high rail around the perimeter. It provides half cover and three quarters if you're small. If you're behind it. What if I drop from? Then that means attacks that you have disadvantage if they're ranged attacks. I will do that. Or well, they already have disadvantage, so. so yeah, I'll drop from. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. You hit the deck. Alright, the captain. All right, he runs over. And uh, when he gets there, the surgeon gives him some healing. Recover some of the captain's wound. And then the captain goes over um, to the eye of the deep and uh, he places his hand on her shoulder and then they both disappear. They vanish. That's unfortunate. Very. Is it? Because, uh, you're prone right there, Ryan. Yes. They reappear surrounded by the shimmering force right next to you. He's I teleported. Very happy. They're here. Okay. Don't want you're prone, don't worry. I'm fine. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> Why did I get my crossbow out? <laughs> oh, long time no see, boy. She looks down at you, Ryan. You can feel I'm the cold out. emanating off her. The captain um, draws a scimitar. Um, and yeah, he did use his special cape that he has. Kind of flourished it a little bit. <laughs> they both teleported and he's appeared here. And he just draws his scimitar and says, uh, Have at you, sea fiends. Let's dance. Seems quite rackish. All right. Uh, the wizard is just saying... <laughs> some more and uh what they do now is they actually sail um with all three actions so they get uh 135 feet closer to you guys they uh, just start working the sails they move in closer the bosun is hammering out the uh the damage to the mangonel it's just superficial really and uh, the first mate is organizing the crew. He's like running around, yelling out orders. And Yazo, you're up. Okay, so... I don't know, I'll dash another 25 for my bonus action. Uh, and I'll stop the ice swimming. That hits a... Uh... All right, when you stab that rapier into her, <laughs> um, the moment the tip of the rapier penetrates that icy mantle she's surrounded with, ice works its way up the blade of the rapier, through the hilt, through the handle, and up through your arm and through your entire body. And you take 15 points of cold damage as you shatter that icy mantle off of her. Uh, how many is five, you say? 15. 15, uh, okay. And no dodge there, I guess. That's not an attack. She doesn't do an attack on you. Okay, done. And uh, 
the screen fly out, fire, <laughs> it just leaps over to the captain, scorching him slightly for three damage too. <laughs> She's pretty cold to her, isn't she? <laughs> that icy mantle's been destroyed now. And the captain's room just says, uh, Yeah! You! And points to like, a nearby sailor. Take the helm! I've got a date with a fancy pants. Yeah! And uh, Captain Zarum draws his scimitar and uh, he charges, pushing by Bryn, like almost knocking you overboard, shoulder barging you, and runs up to face the other captain in melee with a dash action. Alright, uh, I'll leave you guys deciding what Avon and Petra does again. Load. Yep, they load. Alright, they got the Manganel lock loaded and they're beginning to aim it. Millhouse. Can we give Avon standard orders to heal anybody that goes unconscious? Sure. Alright. Uh, I can do stuff now. Which is cool. Uh, gonna hit the eye of the deep, whatever. That. that misses. The scimitar boom, bounces off this mage armor she's surrounded in. I'm gonna use a spell this time. All right. <laughs> The scimitar starts to crackle with this blinding energy. It explodes on impact. And the branding one, is that the one that makes it so she can't go invisible? It is. All right. She uh, is surrounded by this radiant energy. Yeah! <laughs> I'll be taking some of that back, she says to you. And Millhouse, this is done. But... Mill has had a big brain think. Do the sails count as a construct? No, sails are objects. objects. Good. It says this works on an object. <laughs> what is it? Cool. The uh, Metaru Sonicu heal. He can heal other the objects? Go defender. Yeah. To itself or to one construct or object within five feet of it. Okay. So I guess it would be there. Alright, he, uh, he'll need to hoist them nice. up to get to the sails, though. Sails are up about uh, a good 30 feet above the deck of the ship. You'll have to, like, tie it. You'll have to do that afterwards. Yeah. He could, uh, yeah. He's not going to be able to reach the sails. It's not within five feet of him, unfortunately. Okay. That's a good joy. Yeah, if you, if you get him up there, then definitely that would work. Is it too late for me to move him? You can move him. Right, he sit there. Alright, the Eye of the Deep. Um, she, uh... She's gonna sheath herself in this icy mantle again. <laughs> You see the, the frost surround her once more. You can feel the the cold emanating off of her. <laughs> and she's doing a spell. I can't do nothing about it. Alright, it's so a dragon thing's turn. Is that a baby Seb? That's the dragon thing. It makes that noise when it's its turn. All right, uh, what do you guys want to do? Now, uh, any ballista shots will be at disadvantage because, I mean, they're literally right next to the ballista. But the enemy ships within uh, Mangalore. It is. Yeah, let's do that. Mangler away. What are uh -huh. you firing at? Mangler versus Mangler still? Mangler. Trying to disable it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're in range now, so they could start doing some serious damage to you guys. Good call. Alright, first rock poof, splinters the mangonel, and uh, I mean, it's barely functional now. One more good hit, and it's going to be completely shattered. And, uh... <laughs> I said good hit. Alright, uh... 
Um, Fifteen hits. All right, that that. Are you guys uh, both clicked at the same time? So that first one, it does actually destroy the mangonel. And uh, that second one's just going to have to go into the hull of the emerald die. Whoops. Actually, I'll say right. that I'll say that you uh, you crush the bosun because she's right there. So they don't have a ballista or something that we can shoot at. They've got a ballista still too. So it basically almost the same uh, kind of ship, sailing ship with one ballista and one mangonel. All right. So couldn't we have fired upon the ballista instead? Yeah, but Orion didn't have the reaction time to realize a millisecond after I clicked it. I decided to click. Fair enough. This is all well, on uh, I'll leave that up okay. to you guys how, where that third one goes. If it's possible to change the dirt, I mean, I, it feels bad because, like, uh, I, doing I it agree. after I clicked it. So, so wherever you want to put it, it's fine. I, I vote for the priest because he's, um, like, if we take or give any damage to any of the crew or the bandits, he'll just haul himself over there and he'll. No, I reckon the original person is fine because otherwise you'll probably just repair the Mangalo. Sure. I'll okay. go for the priest. That boson just becomes one with the deck. That rock just <laughs> splatters them. Alright, so that's the three actions. Alright, the crossbowmen, they're still at disadvantage. Not quite close enough. Uh, they are going to keep on shooting their bolts at Jasmine, who's the closest target. All at disadvantage. Four bolts in rapid succession. They just uh, shatter against the hull of the ship or just hit the ocean. All right, Bryn, as you've made your way towards the bow, the captain's just pushed by you and on guarded the other captain. Right. Um... I found something that I might want to try. Not sure if it works. Uh, it's called Mental of Inspiration. I think I can yes, put that's it down here. Very good. Uh, um, so I have. Uh, I can do this to four of my friends. Um, so. Well. You can let's, do it. Uh, um... Get all of you guys in. I think it's up to my charisma modifier, oh, yeah. which is. The for yes um so let's do uh millhouse jasmine um oh look i can't see who this is yeah no, and orion it'll be the other four yeah here, right? the other four i'm i'm too far away anyway all right all of you guys uh, get so that's the, my... yeah 10 pit points yeah eight of them because yeah level five uh and also let's try to get the captain all right before uh, that uh with your mantle of inspiration so everyone yeah. get five hit ten pit points and if you want to use your action you can move without provoking opportunity attacks can i stand up with my movement sure you can use half of that movement to stand up i would love to Anyone else want to move? Me, I mean, I will. I'm quite happy here. Okay. The tank's not going to be there to tank it to you guys if you can move away. Say again? I mean, if the tank can move, he ain't tanking hits for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, continue. Okay. Um, so I would like to cast whole person on the uh, captain. Go for it. All right, this uh, captain, Laskala. I'll show you his handout. He looks very. Uh, he looks like you know your dwar kind of swashbuckler type. Very flamboyant, rackish, and uh, he is there with this uh, kind of fancy stance with his cutlass. And all of a sudden, the energy starts to surround him. He begins 
to uh, freeze. Oh, oh no! Oh, I think I, I'm stuck. I'm a statue. <laughs> and then he just breaks his frozen posture. I don't think so. Not this time. You can't suppress my beauty. That is one very effeminate man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, <clears throat> Jasmine says, Well, I'm not swooned by your maneuvers, so it'll be hard to win me over. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I can be very convincing. I'll meet you next time. Kill them and take their women, he says. You fools, we have no women here. He's <laughs> already got 20 sailors. Alright, uh, Jasmine. Taking a shot of one of the bandits. Or the closest one to the hole. That is a miss. It hits the railing. Uh, actually, are you within 150 now? I think you might be, actually. Nope, still a little bit a ways. That is going to hit the railing, gonna unfortunately. Hit the ra yeah, roughly 15 now. And another arrow slams into the railing of the Emerald Eye. Okay, the priest is going to move up towards the bow and it's going to cast uh, a spell sanctuary on himself so if you want to attack him you have to uh, make a wisdom save first and he's going to take a dodge action too you can see him ducking behind the railing and getting ready to anticipate any incoming attack Orion I would like to rage as a bonus action. <clears throat> um, and then I, I will grow uh, my... Your tail? Um, my tail. Yeah, that's a good call. I'm going to grow my tail for once. Uh, and then I will recklessly attack the Eye of the Deep. Alright, the uh, captain also comments, Dear God, man, have you ever heard of a razor? <laughs> okay, you're next. Here, let you me... Think? Let me give you a bit of a shave. I'm sorry if I cut too close to your neck. That's a miss. I can't. I can't stand up to these cutting remarks. <laughs> <laughs> Where will? Okay, um, isn't the still defender um, in assistance? So you practically got advantage. Well, I would finish from reckless. Attack. No, we're, we're not using flanking. Oh, you're using reckless. I missed that. Yeah. All right, you spin around and. Whoosh, you do slap that uh, that tail into her forcefully, and you take ten points of cold damage. Not quite breaking through her icy mantle. Uh, second attack. And you keep on oh, spinning crap. around, but this time the tail actually bounces off her mage armor. Well, dark. I don't like All right, that. Taz. <laughs> the captain, uh, he smiles. <laughs> Let's dance. And he starts like spinning around um, very rackishly, doing like a, a bit of a dance, a bit of a pirouette as he swings his blades. He's going to take a, a swing at Captain Zoram and miss, and then continue around to Orion. And Orion, you're hit for four slashing damage. And uh, just when you think he's done his little dance, he takes a bit of a, a cheap shot, pulls out a dagger and uh, tries to clip Yahazo with it as well, very sneakily, but misses. Uh, you can't cast shield because you you have to be hit for that one. Okay, so I got that back. Yeah, yeah. The prerequisite is uh, when you are hit by an attack or magic missile, which is good because you don't need to use the spell slot. All right, it's a bit of a. He's taking cheap shots, this captain. Alright, the deck wizard. <laughs> he 
does her thing and I guess she's just gonna dodge for now as well. Actually, uh, I think she's going to. Let me just make check the range. Yeah, she's gonna cast a spell and hold it. You see, uh, kind of like in this token how she's holding a little ball of fire. Uh, she's just like that, but instead, it's, it's a, a ball of fire. It's actually no, it's a green orb of acid. <laughs> and she casts a spell readying it, ready to unleash it. And uh, then the uh, Emerald Eye moves and the sailors work the rigging. Um, they uh, they move up 90 feet, two actions. And when she gets into range, she fires her spell off at Jasmine. It's a Melsas and Arrow. She shoots this green arrow pfft, that just whizzes across the ocean. At you, Jasmine. You've got half cover from the railing. And uh, pfft, the the Mel's Acid Arrow hits you, Jasmine. You take seven acid damage and you take on a green glow. And you're going to take a little bit of extra damage at the end of your next turn as the acid keeps on squelching around you. And... You've uh, destroyed their Manganel, but they still have their Ballista, and they still have an action. So they're going to fire the Ballista at Orion. Should have stayed prone, buddy. Seriously. It smashes into the railing. That railing protects you with your half oh. cover. Plus two to your AC from that. Oh, man. All right, the first mate has like a rope coiled around his uh, his shoulder. He has a cutlass in his hand. And uh, of course, I mean, you can't really be on a ship without having a dagger in your mouth. So uh, he puts a dagger in, in his mouth. Arr! It looks like he's gonna like board or something soon. Yazo. Okay, um, we'll start by Mr. Fancy. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. And uh, he spins around whoosh, whoosh, and uh, parries you upwards. <laughs> the fire just leaps up into the air, missing him. I say, hey, Jasmine, watch this. And I'll disengage and I'll backflip off the uh, into, down here. All right, make a, an acrobatics check to do that. That's a, an eight foot drop. Right, you easily do that. And uh, he kind of raises one eyebrow at you. Hmm, impressive. Come back here, you dastardly bastard. <laughs> I say, Millhouse, your beard's like a gerbil. <laughs> yeah! Stop using these witty remarks! I'm gonna bash your head! And uh, he's gonna try and uh, wrestle with the captain. I've always wanted to do this. And the captain just slips out of his grip. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to need to bathe after this. He's so clever. <laughs> All right, uh, the Manganel is ready to fire now, and you guys can take a Manganel shot. Um, yep, you're still uh, close. You're not too close, so you're still able to target something of their ship. Uh, Ballista. No. Boats on Ballista. Go for it. Yep. As long as we can use our parts on that ship, it should be alright. Alright, who wants to fire that? Anyone can uh, let that loose. Alright, you aim the Mangalel upwards. It has to be a very high arcing shot because you're very close proximity, but it goes up and smashes into some of the components of the blister. Their blister's looking damaged now. To be clear, I am not taking the next shot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, Millhouse, you are up. Millhouse. Uh, guess Millhouse will come back out. He's had fun on his little run. <laughs> Suppose if everybody's going after the captain. Because everyone's got the IC um, re rebound. The radiant damage from the smite, did it seem to harm her extra? No, she didn't seem vulnerable or anything. 
Well, roll 20 is doing funny things to the character sheet again. Uh, Alright, so this is against the captain. He looks around. Oh my, a gangbang at this time? <laughs> Damn, his tongue is as sharp as his sword. <laughs> Jump into my arms, Mill House. And uh, he spins around and parries off your 14 as well. Yeah, that's it. And then the dog will attack the uh, ice wizard, whatever it is. It's a mess. Ruff. She jumps backwards, he snaps his maw in the air. She uh, casts another spell, and this time she holds up her clawed hands. And she has very slimy, you know, moist skin. You did see her turn into some sort of water serpent, so she's obviously some sort of water elemental kind of creature, but still a humanoid. A fathomish is what she is. So anyway, she um, surrounds her hands with this glowing red vampiric energy. These very thin tendrils, kind of like crackling veins dance around her clawed fingers <laughs> and then she just pushes her hands forward with great power at orion and cast vampiric touch and doggo just jumps on her back knocks her forward so she misses well she misses anyway but she really misses now <laughs> And uh, despite her missing with that attack, she still has this uh, this glow on her hands. And still have this vampiric energy surrounding her. Okay, uh, whose turn is it? I will do one attack. Somebody else do other two. Are you guys want to just uh, keep on working the three weapons? Yes. Uh, fire Meganel at their ballista here. Go for it. You almost completely take out the ballista. It's uh, just holding together enough to function. The second rock misses, <laughs> splashes in the ocean next to the Emerald Eye. Millhouse. Oh. Bring it home, baby. Fire! Oh. <laughs> no, it's too late. Too late. It's too late. <laughs> Captain like yells in your ear like really loudly and just throws you off this time. Okay. The uh, the crossbowmen, it does look like they're getting ready to board if they get close enough to you guys. Um, they've got grappling lines and, and whatnot, like pretty much ready with the, uh, the first mate. Um, but they're going to keep on firing their crossbows and they'll just be focusing on Jasmine. They're not at disadvantage now though. First bolt. I clicked it. Maybe I didn't. Miss. Hit. You hit for nine piercing. Miss. And a hit. You hit for another four. The two crossbow bolts land you for 13 damage. The other two just hit the deck or something. Bryn. Right. I'll try to hold person uh, the captain again because I promised that. So let's see. He uh, is not affected this time. He just says, "Ha! Huh, you'll have to do better than that." Well, I tried. Um, I'll do a healing word on Jasmine. If you do a bonus action spell, the only other one you can do is a cantrip. Oh, all right. Okay. You wouldn't be able to um, do that this turn. Right. So, well, I think... I'm not sure if this one is a bonus action, maybe. No. Uh, so, no. Then, I guess this ends my turn. Jasmine. Well, (laughs) 
I'll fire at one of the bandits, probably at the main point of the hole. All right, you've uh, you've got this one next to you now, so range attacks will be at disadvantage. Actually, you know what? Nah, I might risk it for the biscuit and uh, draw a sword, sword and attack the eye of the deep. Okay. That hits. Alright, when you hit her, the same thing happens. The short sword is covered in ice, and that ice, it uh, it damages you badly. You take 10 points of cold damage from that attack, and it's not quite enough to break away her armor of Agathus. Uh, going in again. That's another hit. Alright, uh, you slam the short sword into her just hard enough to shatter that icy armor that entombs her. However, the, the damage from that renders you unconscious. It's too, too much pain. You take another 10 points of damage. And, uh, yeah, and with that, whatever is the damage from the arrow, acid arrow, that's a failed save. Yep. You take six acid damage, so a failure on your death saves. But uh, you guys see that the acid has basically subsided now. But Jasmine's looking pretty badly hurt. This... Uh, Deck Priest is oh going to uh, continue dodging. Orion. Uh, I'm actually going to use my action to uh, equip my shield. Okay. Uh, and then I'll uh, shift for some temp HP and another uh, AC. Um. And just double checking, because I was attacked, I, I won't lose my rage, correct? No, you're not gonna. Okay. If you take damage, it'll be next turn. If you go like another turn now without taking damage, then yeah. Gotcha. All right. At the end of your next turn, you'd lose it. All right, that's me then. Okay, the captain is having fun spinning around and slashing people. He's gonna pretty much do the same thing. He's gonna attack Captain Zarum with the scimitar hit he's going to attack Orion miss and he's going to do a cheap shot at Millhouse with a dagger and the cheap shot he uh, he like aims for your chest Millhouse not realizing you've got that armor underneath and the dagger just gets stopped dead on your scale man and that's his turn oh is that a <laughs> We can't end his term without some sort of witty remark. Is that some scale mail in your pocket, or are you just happy to to see me? I think you need to work in your aim. <laughs> <laughs> With your blows and your words. Hmm. I felt something hard down there. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! There ain't enough room for two gnomes! The deck wizard says. And she's going to uh, actually fire a Mel Sassad arrow at you, Millhouse. What if I shield it? Bring it. <laughs> and it's going to just, just shoot over the top of your head and miss you. Alright. It's extra, extra AC as well, don't you see small? Yeah. Okay, the, if it's uh, not a crit, it's not going to hit. <laughs> That's Millhouse's motto. <laughs> Alright, the crew actually uh, sail uh, 90 feet closer. And you guys uh, are basically broadside to each other now. And then uh, as that's happening, they're going to 
as as they're sailing over before, obviously they get within five feet or whatever. They will be firing a ballista shot, and they'll be firing that at Orion, and that misses. All right, when that happens, the uh, first mate has all the crews basically grapple um, on onto the ship. So they take like uh, like wooden planks and ropes and stuff and uh, ladders, and they drop them down. So basically, you guys can walk from ship to ship now, and vice versa. They they board you guys. The ladders are about here, and these areas. Yazo. Okay. So, um, Avon's basically on healing, isn't he? He's on, so. so I think he's got Jasmine. And her shield's down, so I'll stab her. Oops. I didn't stab her. <laughs> that, uh, that hits her. All right, uh, 18 damage. All right, you stab through her, and uh, the green fire, it uh, leaps onto the captain. Let me just remove these uh, little cross-hatching tokens I put on there. All right, well, the force from that rapier stabbing into her, you do see her, her flesh kind of just uh, open up and Basically, a, a line of water kind of starts spraying out of her. You can smell sea water coming off of her. Some of the green fire splashes onto the captain as well, and she loses concentration on that spell. Good enhancement, Milhouse. <laughs> Although, uh, I'll disengage from... Go down here a little bit. Right, let me move these layers around. All right, the captain says, Yeah, they're boarding us! Oh man, on deck! Any one of you scallywags who betray me will have their heads cut off. And he tries to actually uh, intimidate their other crew. And uh, the other sailors actually uh, freeze and uh, they stop loading the ballista. And uh, all of the crew, the 20 sailors or whatever that work in the ship, they start to look around and um, it looks like they're just going to kind of wait and see what happens with this fight. Right, I'll have I'll have Avin, uh, let me see what he's got. He is a cleric. Um, right, I'll have him just mass healing word everyone. Eight healing for all. Thanks Avin. He's a grave cleric, correct? I think uh, I think Jasmine might get a little something extra. Oh yep, he's a grave cleric, so it's uh, exactly the same because he already rolled max. But yeah, it is. You're right. It's max. Uh, you get max healing if you're unconscious. It's already max there. Um, and then for his action, he's just going to be like, I mean, can't really do anything now. So it will just be dodging. Him and Petra will be dodging. You can't fire a Mangonella at this close range. Millhouse. Well, I'm having a lot of trouble hitting that captain. So, I'm gonna move out of the way so Yaozo can get in there. My captain doesn't take a, an attack at you. Yeah, he knew he wouldn't have hit me, that's why. Um, and then I'll attack the eye. Miss. Hit. You slash through her and more water spills out of her form. She's looking bloody. Dog will also attack her. Hit. Pff, more water just pff, splashes off of her. 
and she's kind of starting to look very her skin's very translucent looking now looks like she's gonna just burst into water soon ah! she's going to just uh, do her, her armor of agathus again and uh, i mean you guys have seen enough times now to know what it does she her in ice and does damage to you if you hit her very one trick <laughs> And it gives her tempered points. All right, the ship. We ran. Surely we ran. Is there a disc going on our ship? We do not ram. Do we move away? I was going to ask if we move like twenty feet, will the ladders and stuff that they've yeah uh, the ladder will like, fall. I mean, I would like that. If we go the full 45, we should be out of range enough to hit their ballista again with the Mangala. Let's do that. Which way you go? Yeah. Which way is the wind going? North? We can only go four or it's... Yeah, you can really only go this way at the moment because you've got the ship right next to you here. You can't turn. Yes. Let's do that. Alright, 45 feet. Well, we could turn downwards, couldn't we? Yeah, you could start to turn. Yeah, you could spin it around. You guys want to do that? Wait, we got... Mm, where is it? Oh, it doesn't say. Do you want to turn so you're like vertical on this map? Like this way? Yeah. Uh, this way. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. we, we should be able to. Alright, let me and do then move Let me do this turn. Is. I just need to move uh, this, this other ship out of the way for a second. Break yourselves. <laughs> Something is sure to break here. The ladder, no! <laughs> Alright, let me move. Gotta do a little bit of maneuvering around. And. Uh, all right, you can do a 45 degree turn. Whoosh, like that. <laughs> Turns everyone else sideways. <laughs> ah! That's actually 90 degrees though. Oh yeah, yeah, 90 degrees. Wait, I think it's a 90 degrees turn. Yeah, we can do 90 degrees. I failed math. Did I, I say 45? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, turning. It's, uh, where is it? Did it yeah, 190 degree turn is what I meant, not 45. Okay, uh, so um, you do a 90 degree turn, and everyone apparently turns shoot? 90 degrees too. <laughs> Travel 45 down. Right, let me move. Yeah, let's move. Let, let me move this uh, ship back to where it was because I did move the ship away 30 feet. So oh. you're like that now. That ladder, the ladders, um, they they draw the ladders back as that's happening, and they failed to board basically. Can we move 45 feet this way? You can't, you can't turn anymore. You can only do one yeah. 90 degree turn. Oh, gotcha. Please don't turn again. So we, just go. We go down. Down. Okay, you guys want to head down another 45? All right, you're going with the wind now. So you've got uh, 60 feet. That's perfect. Great. Yeah. Go the full 60. Okay. I thought we didn't have any sails. Uh, you have sails? They haven't been destroyed. All right, here it goes. No, but they do function. Whoosh. That's the sound of the wind. Whoosh. 60 <laughs> feet. Okay, you guys Whoosh. do a bit of a maneuver and break away from being boarded. And that should give us one mangonel should... attack on their ballista. No, the uh, movement, you get one move in turn. With you the got helm. three actions. There's one action. You yeah, have, we moved twice. Yeah, you've done can, two actions. We have one more action. You got one left. You can fire ballista, fire mangonel, or move. I would love to fire the mangonel on their ballista if possible. No. Yeah. Uh, mangonel on their ballista is uh, possible because uh, that's sixty-five feet away. You're like literally just in range. All right, that in, in the uh, the rush of trying to get that mangonel in order, you just swing straight over the top of the ship. <laughs> Splashes in the ocean over here. 
Okay, that's the three turns done. Gah! Get back here, cowards! The bandits yell out. And they're gonna fire their crossbows. Um, this time, they're gonna be firing... Um, let me just check. Rangers at disadvantage. Two on Yazo. Miss and miss. Two on Bryn. Whoops. That's a miss. It's the same attack roll for their scimitar and their light crossbow. And both bolts miss you, Bryn. Because, uh, yeah, they're literally five feet too far to be uh, not at disadvantage. Oh. So that saved you. And you're up. Uh, yeah. Well, I want to go... Can I get to a place where I'm 60 feet away from the bunch of them? So, like, I want to be 60 feet away from, uh, you see, that point. It's that... If you get to the stairs with your 30 feet of movement, you can be, uh, yeah, 60 feet within, like, four people, like, up here. Uh, also, right. yeah, we, when the ship pulled away, that intimidation of their captain kind of wore off. That's why they're still firing at you guys as well. That's not a noise. Okay, because I, I want to cast Shatter uh, in the middle of them. Okay. All right, uh, so you can move up to, yeah, bottom of the stairs, and then you can do a Shatter. There's a template for Shatter too. Uh, this will do a little bit of damage to the Emerald Eye as well, but... Nothing crazy. All right. All right, I'll, I'll do I'll, the third level. I'll move you up as well. So you move up, you run across the deck to the bottom of the stairs, you cast a shadow, and uh, 60 feet. Um, it also does damage to the... Uh, ballista. Yeah, it's going to damage the ballista, right. and it's going to damage the hull. All right. Uh, before you do an AoE as well, you need to um, actually place the template down. Um... But in this okay. case, I mean, you don't really have many options because you're basically at the end of 60 feet. So, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, it, it's going to hit um, this group right here like this. Right. All right, you run up. <laughs> you just uh, explode that shatter onto the bow. And they will make con saves, so including the ship. And uh, DC is 15. And Nine. also the... Uh, their ballista, right? Yep, it'll hit their ballista as well. Alright, that explosive energy splinters wood. It um, damages their ladders. It uh, damages the hull of the Emerald Eye slightly. And, Sorry! Uh, it damages their ballista enough to completely destroy it. Bits of splintered wood pff, break away. Ballista is gone. Ah, it's alright! Just a wee little scratch! And right. uh, amongst um, very well though. Uh, yeah, amongst all of the crew, no one drops, but some of them are very badly injured. Like the bandits, the crossbowmen, they're very badly injured. Quite a lot of damage still. Okay, that was movement okay. and action. Um, yeah. So uh, let's see how much the range is on. Oh wait, I, can, I still can't do that if I already cast a spell, right? Uh, so no, that's it. End of turn. Jasmine, you are uh, uh, healing from Avon. You can move half your movement speed to stand up. Yep. And I just go behind them. Uh, wait, I must have cut out because I... I so said I'll go behind. Oh. oh yeah, you can move the actual ship. Just, just move that back. Yeah, I was like thinking, why well, can't I move my tug? <laughs> All right, when you move away, this um, eye of the deep, she uh, just chuckles, <laughs> and she's gonna try and hit you with a dagger. She hits. All right, uh, Papa comes in and actually bites onto her hand. Oh no, did he use his reaction already? Oh no, that was last turn. Yeah. Bites onto her hand and makes that attack miss. Okay, just, uh... 
I cast Hunter's Mark on the closest bandit, which is there. Yeah, uh, are you within 90 feet? Uh, let's just check. You're going to need to move a little bit more, but uh, hmm, I don't think you can get there. Unless you're going to jump well, off uh, this area. This area. Yeah, uh, how high is the main it's, deck? It's eight uh, feet. So you need an acrobatics right. check to make that one without falling over. Right. Acrobatics. You, you, you fall prone. You fall over. You, you, caught, you get your leg caught on the railing, and you land prone. Take one bludgeoning damage from the fall. Could have been worse. <laughs> yeah, it definitely could have been worse. All right, you are prone now, and you don't have enough to stand have up. Uh, yeah, every time I click on my token, uh, I get the whole ship. You should, if you click on your token, it should just get your token. Did you want to take an action though? You've still got your action, still got your bonus action. Uh, I'll sit at a disadvantage lying down. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a hard shot to make, but it's possible. Miss. Miss. Are you, uh, yeah. Quickly grab your bow, you let off a couple of shots. You can barely see over the, the back of the four deck and those arrows go awry. All right, the, uh, the deck the priest is uh, going to move up and uh he's gonna cast spiritual weapon on Bryn. uh ignore the bless i don't know why he's got that all right so uh, this is basically a a spiritual belaying pin kind of looks like just like a big club made of spectral energy <laughs> whoops wrong one that's spirit guardians and uh, it misses you Bryn. um it's gonna be about there and Then uh, as a, an action, that was a bonus action, he's going to uh, cast Sacred Flame on you and a Holy Fire falls down from above and you need to make a Dexterity save for it. <laughs> holy Ember falls down on you and you take six Radiant damage. Orion. Now, uh, I don't think you uh, took damage, right? Did you? So yeah, you need to attack this turn or you lose your rage. Got it. Uh, I'll recklessly attack the either deep with my tail. Sure. You hit her again and uh, that icy energy transfers up your tail. You take 10 points of cold damage and you also shatter that armor of agathis again um i'll attack her again and that hits this time uh water splashes all over the deck mixing with the seawater that's already coming aboard and she is looking like she's about to melt or something all right the captain keeps on fighting the other captain and he's going to attack zarum that misses. He's gonna attack Orion. And that misses. And then he does a cheap shot on Zerum with a dagger. And that misses. Hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm all out of witty remarks, I must say. He's on his last legs, guys. Get him now. <laughs> he can't even hit. <laughs> get, get me closer! And the deck wizard uh, holds her hands behind her hips like this and says, Mel And uh, she readies a spell. 
and uh, that's when the emerald eye also turns 90 degrees. And moves. Whoops, it's not meaning to move this way. All right, they move 60 feet with the wind. And uh, when she's in range, she says, Arrow! And she's gonna fire the Mel Sassad arrow at Orion. A green arrow just, with an arrow tip, shoots across the ocean at you, Orion. And sticks into you, hitting you for eight acid damage. And you also are covered in acid now, so you'll take some more damage next turn. All right, they're uh, they're out of weapon options now, so uh, all they can do is uh, sail some more. Let me just reorientate all these tokens quickly. Yeah, they're going to try and like cut ahead of you guys by the looks of it, because they're going to move another sixty feet, like that. And uh, that's it, it for their turns. They won't take a third action. All right, the first mate uh, goes and he's like organizing more ladders and stuff for boarding. Yazo. Okay, so, um, one up. Uh, go for the stab. Ha ha ha, I enjoy a good stabbing. Miss, he parries you off. Shring! Ah, oh, well, okay, and then I'll have to have a disengage again. Uh, I think I'll go for the jump. Right, make an acrobatics check. Easily make that jump. All right, Zerum says, uh, "Get this punch off of my ship," and uh, he returns attacks at the uh, other captain, doing some two-weapon fighting with a uh, cutlass and parrying dagger, and uh, that's they're all missing. Right, Avon will just let off another round of healing words for everyone. So everyone gets another five healing. Bryn, Yasmin, Yazo, Ryan, Millhouse. You assume Millhouse has been hurt? How dare. <laughs> How dare you insult Millhouse in this way? Okay, Millhouse, you're up. Alright. Um, yeah, I get the ice one again. I'm gonna go for a. Ah, oh, come a, on, dear. Help me what you've got. Alright, uh, she chuckles at you and basically goes to jump on you, Millhouse. You just flick that scimitar up with a radiant energy, and when you pass the, the blade through her, she turns into water. Completely into water. Everything she's holding, everything she's wearing also turns into water. And that water just <laughs> splashes all over the deck, leaving behind absolutely no trace of her. Like a water balloon, she trust. just pops. I yell out, somebody check below deck, because I think she might have gone through the floorboards. <laughs> I can assure you, she always was that moist. <laughs> it often happens around me, really. And guess I'll attack the captain. Cushing! Parry, miss. Then. Yeah, so he's a coward, so I'm gonna just move Doggo up. <laughs> wow. As a coward, I know when I meet another one. <laughs> Your experience in the coward field of expertise. Alright, this captain is very rackish and he's dodging. He puts. Uh, the scimitar in the dog's mouth and said, oh, <laughs> got a bone? And he does not opportunity attack if the dog moves away. So still the Finnick kind of runs up, leaps at the captain and walks off. All right, it's so the ship's turn. Still got your full going on. 20 crew. Uh, I suggest we just try to keep up with it to make yeah. sure it doesn't escape. Exactly, same. How many moves do you want to do? Just one, really. Just to get us yeah. neck and neck just with the other ship. Okay. Alright, you guys go 60. 
And yeah. then can they use three actions to ready the mangonel and not like just not take the last one to fire it? If you ready, then they can just ready a single action. Great. So you just want to ready one of the mangonel. What would you want to shoot with the mangonel? Well, you got ballista. If we could shoot the sails because Doggo. Later. Well, I have mending. You can shoot Doggo the captain. Oh, hey, let's do that. Can we do that? Wait. This <laughs> yeah, captain. Yeah, there's 20 guys up here with the ballista. <laughs> Just... Well, yeah, we the there's, like, there's like, you know, five crew members operating the sails, five op or six operating the ballista, six operating the mangonel, things like that. They're spread out everywhere, but um, there's enough, yeah. yeah, to fire the ballista three times if you wanted. You are at disadvantage, though, because yeah. the captain's next to the ballista. Heck yeah, let's do that. Right. Sure. Go well, we already it. moved once, so we have two attacks. Uh, two, right? two shots, yeah. yeah. He's quite close to the blister, so he's like, you know, skirting around, dodging. And hey, someone else rolled this day, by the way. I've rolled oh, yeah. off. Jasmine, are you going to do uh, it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Alright. Fire Marissa! Fire Marissa! The captain says. And... Nice. Oh, I do say... Oh, was that really necessary? As uh, that bolt, it like ripped through the captain's side. You shot me. Well, I did say I'm one hard, cold hearted bitch. You almost broke my heart. Like literally. Well, second time's the charm. And you got another shot. Tight. And uh, he jumps up on the top of the ballista and just like preemptively kicks the uh, the trigger, just firing off that uh, that bolt as he like kind of backflips backwards back onto the deck. Mess. Really? All right, the crossbowmen line up. And uh, three of them are going to operate their... Oh no, their ballista's broken. <laughs> so they're going to operate their light crossbows. Um, oh yeah, Orion, you're going to take a little bit of acid damage too from before. Sure. Oh wait, have you had your turn yet? No, I'm not, no not yet. Alright, you will take some soon. Alright, so yeah, they're going to fire a, a volley of crossbow bolts. One of them's going to fire at Bryn. Miss. And then at the captain's room. That hits him. Then at Orion. And that misses. And then at Millhouse. Miss. Brain. Right. Um, so... I'll now this time first heal someone because otherwise I keep forgetting. Um, I will uh, do a healing word on Jasmine first, and let's see what spells do I have. Can I do it higher level? Yeah, I'll do it at second level. There we go. Hmm. Well, at least it's something. Um, and then I will let's see. Can I get to anyone? I'll at least move away from this uh, this weapon far enough. I'll go stand behind the captain again. Yeah. Did you get that healing, Jasmine? Um, sorry? I was saying to Jasmine. See, make sure she got that healing. Right. Uh, yeah, I did. I just had to get rid of the ships. Um, can't no see. I think that's why I keep on moving the holes. No problem. Right. Um, let's see, can I do a Bardic Inspiration or is that also... That's a bonus action. Bonus action, so I cannot do that. Okay. Um, well, I don't have much range stuff. Uh, I could, yeah, I could, of course, just fire my light crossbow at the captain, maybe? Or yeah. the other one is in front of them. Can I? That provides I... half cover, so he'll have plus two to his AC. 
Okay, well, I'll try anyway. And it's a mess. You uh, yep. Well, end of turn. Shoot into the steps. Jasmine, you can use half your movement speed to stand up. Yep. Move up to there and fire off to the closest bandit because <laughs> Roll 20's been a silly bugger with the Dragon Force. Oh no, not Dragon Force, Dragon Fang. Right. <laughs> Red Dragon Force. You want me to move you? Please. Sure. Alright, you move up. You can see one of the. Well, three of the crossbowmen are seriously injured. And that hits the railing, so miss because of the cover. And that hits him. You draw back on the longbow. <laughs> You hit him straight in the chest, and he falls over the railings, overboard, poof, into the ocean, dead. The deck priest is going to move the spiritual weapon up, and it's going to uh, actually uh, hit you, Jasmine. He's going to move it up there, and he'll swing the spiritual weapon at you. Miss. And then he's going to check his range he's gonna move up a little bit closer and uh he'll cast sacred flame on Bryn again Bryn, you need dexterity saving throw another holy fire bomb <laughs> explodes from above you falls down and you just easily jump back out of the way dodging it <laughs> orion do i take acid at the the end or beginning yeah and the end End of this turn, you'll take that extra acid damage. Alright. Uh, I'll recklessly attack the captain with my tail. And he would, uh, he will parry that off. He'll, like, as you swing that tail, he just uses the flats of his blades, holds them up, and just blocks the attack. He uses his reaction to do that. You swing again, and this time the tail just cuts up under his defenses and slashes him across the face. Ah! He's bleeding badly, and he screams, My beautiful face, my moneymaker! What have you done to it? <laughs> That's all for me. <laughs> and... He's a bit of a sissy, isn't he? <laughs> Are you ending there, right? Yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll end there. Should've... There we go. Alright, you're gonna take four acid damage, and then that acid wears off. You're not tripping out anymore. Huh. The captain just says, You have caused irreparable harm to me! This cannot go unpunished, you swine! And he's going to turn his attention towards you, Orion. Yeah! And he just crits you back for five oh, wow. slashing damage. Slashes you across the face, but kind of just cuts through your beard. And uh, he attacks again. Yeah! And hits you for another four. And then he tries to stab you. Yeah! And he hits you for another three damage. Wow. <laughs> he's breaking. He's breaking. <laughs> Jasmine will remark. Yeah, uh, his face was already scarred up when I first met him, so they're just more trophies for his kills. 
Yeah, yeah, but you don't chop up a man's beard. <laughs> Good yeah, work! That's, that's war. Get him, Captain! I'm gonna help! Yeah! She's gonna do a ray of frost at you, what? Ryan. And <laughs> this cold energy hits you for three damage and Jeez. slows your movement speed by ten feet. All right, this ship is going to do a 90 degree turn. And they're That's going point to point. Uh, just basically move up. And <laughs> they're going to ram. They're going to smash into the hull of the dragon fang. So what happens is uh, someone needs to make a strength saving throw for the dragon thing. So click on strength. And everyone aboard needs to make a strength saving throw. Live advantage. All right, the, four, the impact of the Emerald Eye just basically like, you know, the the bow just glances. They don't have, like, a, a, a naval ram or anything like that, but they do just smash straight into the hull. Um, the force of that causes Bryn to full prone. And, uh... Oh. Yazo, you full prone. You crippling for dwarf. Knocked down uh, onto the deck. Um, Millhouse, Jasmine, Orion, you guys maintain your footing. The captain, La Lascalar, he's going to make a strength save. And uh, they have advantage because they have sea legs, these captains. And uh, this is a room. Neither of them are knocked prone. Um, still, Defender needs to make a strength save. And uh, I'll do one for Avon and Jasmine, I guess. Uh, Avon and Petra. Uh, Petra, I meant. Wrong, wrong one, wrong woman, and uh, right, both of them are knocked prone, and uh, then the uh, the bandits on there they have to make strength saves too. All right, the the impact knocks uh, all three crossbowmen to the ground, and then there's the deck wizard who has to make a strength save. It's quite a big impact, so a lot's going on. She has sea legs as well, but that doesn't help her. She's knocked prone. And the priest has sea legs, so he has advantage, and he doesn't get knocked prone. And the first mate has sea legs, and he's knocked prone anyway. All right. And then there's the actual damage to the dragon fang, which is uh, 78 bludgeoning damage to the hull. The, the hull has 300 hit points before you sink. Okay. So, uh... Then, uh, that was it. No, the ships can't move anywhere now until... The, uh, you know, it takes hours to... To sort this out. The ship has to be moved away. So, movement speed is zero for both ships now. Alright, the first mate jumps to his feet. And, uh, he's going to, uh take a dash action. He's gonna run over and interact with object, just like throw this ladder down. And he's gonna start boarding and he's gonna run straight up to here with his dash. And he's got a cutlass holding it in two hands. Yazo. Um, so stand up. Uh, if I dash, can I get to that square? Um, yeah, that'll be like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and you'll provoke two opportunity attacks, but yeah. Will I? Yep, you'll, oh. get, you'll have to move out of his reach, and then out of his reach, because you have to go around both of them. Or you have to go around oh, this our friend. Guy. Oh yeah, that's your what? sailors, you can go through these guys. But yeah, you'll put, he, he's I, mean, you're, I mean the captain, this guy, you're within five feet of him. You'll provoke one uh, opportunity yes. attack. I mean, you could try and just climb okay. straight up. No, I'll, I'll take the attack. 
It it's really depends on how you're trying to move. Uh, I'll take the attack from him, but I should be well, you, down you, that, so I should be. Then you're not moving it. That's, that would be climbing up. Okay, attack so can only happen if you move out of people's range. Alright, when you really when you speed. move back, he uh, he actually doesn't attack you. He doesn't attack you anyway. And uh, Love he, it. you miss. He's, he's waiting to intercept your attack and phew, he parries you off. Okay, I'll, I'm up in a, a, a puff now. Captain Zerum just said, I'm gonna finish you! And uh, takes the, the captain's scruffy hair, rips his head up, puts his scimitar to his neck, and whisk, cuts his throat. <laughs> oh my! Ah! <laughs> and he just keeps on soaring. <laughs> And he just cuts the captain's head clean off of his shoulders. <laughs> Look what we got here! And he holds it up for all to see. And when everyone sees that, immediately uh, yield, yield. The first mate, the deck wizard, all the officers and the crew surrender. Did anybody check under the deck for the sea witch? Nope, did not. Let's go. Well, she's not attacking us. I think we're okay. All right, we're going to uh, take a 10 minute break now. When we get back, we'll deal with the aftermath of this and I'll tally up the experience points too. Let's cool, I'm probably going to make it a short night again for something a bit rough, so. You going? Yeah, I got, I'll, I'll just, I'm still feeling a bit rough. Okay, well, thanks okay. for joining. I'll yeah. talk to you. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Hello. See you next see week. Ya. Later, dude. So, Silent Peak, did you see the? Uh, did you catch that uh, magic item? The captain was wearing the supposed magic item. Yes. Come on, he, he he grabbed his cape and then teleported from one ship to another. That has to be a cape of the what is it, Mountain Bank or something? Was it? Did that, or was it to see uh, which that was using a spell? I mean, he could have uh, used a spell, but. Granted, I don't know of every magic item, but I can't really recall one that enables, well, a cape at least, that enables teleportation. I'm gonna be really smug about it, just for you, just so you know, so I'm not being fucked correct. I just want to prepare you for me being smug. Well, let's check what he's wearing anyway. I mean, loot. Sure. Well... If you want to be in character, I doubt you could identify a magic No, hell no. Orion has no idea. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be so... Well, it's not so that orientated, it would be really nice to get a magic item. Yeah, <laughs> I, wouldn't... I wouldn't be surprised if we actually do manage to level up this time around, but... I got a feeling that we're still fair way away. No, yeah. we're like 2,000 XP away or something. That'd be a lot of XP for this fight. Good nice. Nice. Well, we managed XP. Here we go. Well, I'm. Well, um. <clears throat> but what I know, I'm like. For the first four levels, it's just like a couple of, um, a couple of hundred between each level. But when you get to level five to later on, I think the next one may be 2300. So, uh, who knows? All right, 23. I mean. Unless I wrote it down wrong, 
we have like 11,000 experience points. Yeah. So when did you say we would level up? I see, for uh, 13,000 or 14,000, we level. All right. I think it might be 14,000. So, it is, it yeah, we we'll 14, All right. I just looked it up. Yeah, it's 14 level 6. Oh, uh, that's what you mean. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see after this fight. We're in a good position now. No, as long as. I mean, kind of. We're, as long as this captain doesn't stab us in the back and actually take us, takes us to the island. We stand to get there with like a month left on Cinder's time. Um, which is not awful. But, well, Milhouse wasn't there, but surely Orion remembers trying to attack that thing in the first place and having no effect on it at all. That's, I mean, that's true. I hope it's not there. Well, yeah, well, we're, I thought we were hoping it was there, so well, then maybe, we could... I don't want the baby to be there. The, the, the soulmonger thing to be there, right? Isn't the soulmonger the baby? I thought the soulmonger was, I mean, we have no idea, but I always figured the soulmonger was like, like an item, like a thing, like a, like an object. Well, I thought it was always that thing, because it was, like, straight away. As soon as that thing was gone, the death curse happened. Uh, sorry, just to catch everybody else up. Uh, so the first session of this campaign, we, like, were in a, in a dungeon, and we get to the end, and there's, like, a baby, just like a magic baby, and it was, like, crying, and it almost killed all of us, like, really quickly. Uh, and then a lit showed up, Asrak, and was like, Hey, this is this is my baby now. And then he killed one of our buddies and said, Come find me in Schult if, you know, you want revenge or something. Uh, and then just, like, peaced out. So, I, I guess we're kind of figuring out, I, I, get, I, I mean, it makes sense if that's the salt hunger, I suppose. Yeah. So, we're actually here to get revenge then. Orion is here to get revenge, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, stopping the Soulmonger is nice and heroic and everything. Yeah, I guess then people can can live again if they already died. This is yes. really strange, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, let's see. Yes. Going to have a bathroom break too. So, see you in a bit. See. Looking into some of these rare items though, some of them could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Like that cool. Wand of Wonder. Dude, that thing is. I had a campaign with that and I swear it killed us. Well, yeah, of course it killed you. <laughs> <laughs> What item, what rare item would you get for uh, Millhouse if if we succeed? For Millhouse? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess it depends if this campaign continues. If it does, probably the Cloak of Displacement. That's dope. That makes you an invincible, essentially. Pretty much. <laughs> Hit a 26 AC at disadvantage. I dare you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Said if it's not a crit, it's not gonna hit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think Orion might do well with a uh, <laughs> with a with a belt of giant kind. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just to actually get his strength up. <laughs> I've got, but uh, the wand of wonder is ten. Sure. But there was one other one that could be fun too. Just trying to recall what it was. How long do you think this campaign will go for? Level 10. Yeah. I don't know, he might push it up to go further again. Sure. 
I hope he, I hope he does because that really play many uh high level games. Yeah. Yeah, but the campaign normally goes up to level 10. Yeah. Kind of metagaming here, but that kind of implies that we have other stuff to do after we get to Omo. Yeah. Right, or before, because we need level 10 to get... to do whatever we need to do when we're there. Sure. By the time the campaign ends with Meat Grinder, we should be level 11. That'd be nice. Hey. Seb. Right, with would that. you allow... Would you allow a bag of beans? <laughs> what do you mean? That's a rare magic item. What, from Syndra? Yeah. Any ma rare magic item of your choice is a reward. If it's you can stop the death curse. Bag of beans or a wand of wonder? Is bag of beans rare? I thought it was uncommon. No, it's rare. Okay. Well, so rare that I never knew how I never knew what the rarity was. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much like after uh, everyone has kind of settled down from the combat, um, the captain's room is uh, parading Captain Lascalar's head around like a trophy and showing it to people. Ah, oh, look! He ain't so pretty now, is he? <laughs> Men, tie it. To the mast. We're not gonna sail the black. We're gonna sail this punce's head. <laughs> and the, the crew uh, do what he says, and uh, they start to hoist up Captain Lascalar's head from the mast, sailing it like a flag. Hey, so you're gonna take us to that island we want to go to now? All right. Uh, also. Um, the captain, uh, before that, the captain has uh, started to organize all the crew, and uh, they're working on uh, they're working on getting the ship separated. Um, luckily, like uh, there wasn't enough damage to the dragon thing for it to risk sinking or anything like that. It was just uh, it didn't it didn't break through the actual uh, the bilge or anything like that. Uh, also, the captain so can we move has over, uh, uh, our ballista and and um, Mount Grinnell to the other ship because those were destroyed on their ship. Ah, we're gonna take her back to Jahaka Anchorage. We're gonna have to bring one of these into the dry dock, but uh, we'll be fine to make the journey back. We'll be back in less than a day. We'll be there by sundown if we move quick. And if we're in any luck. Oh, and... Uh, <laughs> the captain's room has actually uh, also uh, commanded his men to seize the other captain's possessions and all of the cargo and whatever else they have on the other ship. And uh, he's also taken that magical cape Ah, uh, nice yeah, prize. That wasn't the deal, Captain. You promised us the magic items he had. What? I did no such thing. What I've promised you is this. And uh, he gives you the other half of that bejeweled cloak that he wears. Which is worth 375 GP. I think I'm going to need a new cloak now. And, uh, yeah, he does have this, like, red, like a red hooded cloak that he'd taken from Lassikar, Laxalar, and he does start to uh, put it on himself. No. No, I don't accept this. Um, Millhouse, come here and kill him. Ah, uh, watch your awesome. tongue, boy. You promised us the magic items we found on the ship. This was part of the deal. Let me let you have your life. We give you three ships, we get the captain's magic items. Mm, I don't think so. I think this cape will look good on me. I think, now. Uh, 
a torn throat would look good on you too. He uh, drops the uh, captain's body on the ground. You really want to do this? There's 50 good men here who will gladly throw you overboard and feed you to the sharks, if I say so. Of course, uh, <clears throat> if they see that I don't come back as well, back to the anchorage, <laughs> what do you think will happen to your other friends there? Choose your words carefully, boy. This could get ugly soon. I'll frustrate it all the time. Walk off to the dead of the ship and back down. Ah, but don't worry. <laughs> There's plenty more fish in the sea. I'm sure you'll find your own treasures. And, uh, oh yeah. I'm gonna... Get you guys all sealed out here as soon as we get back to the anchorage. You can all piss off. And hopefully I never see you again. Just hang tight a little bit. Grab some grub. And we'll be moving on in no time. Alright, for that encounter, um, you guys did have assistance of Avon and Jazz and, and Petra, sorry. Um, and then the captain, so... Um, it's not a great deal, but it's uh, it's 130 experience. You don't get any like experience for defeating a ship or anything. It's mainly just the uh, the bosun, the priest, the deck wizard, and whatnot. And then yeah, you had the assistance of everyone else, so it gets split up a bit more than usual. All right, uh, so yeah, the captain, uh, he's just, uh, you know, you can tell that he's a, still a filthy pirate captain. He's not that honorable, really. But uh, he does give you that, that coat, so add that to the uh, party loot. And... Uh, keep track of that. What was that? Who keeps track of the party loot? Uh, I think it's usually oh, Petra gone. I'll just put it in there. It's usually Petra. Oh, you've got the bag of holding, Millhouse. Yes. All right. Yeah, add that into the bag of holding then. All right. Uh, within an hour, the crew work on uh, like using ropes and rigging and the the waves to separate these two ships and uh, split the crew up. So there's basically like a skeleton crew of officers on each ship so you're able to sail both ships back to Jahaka Anchorage um, so uh, it takes you guys a uh, better part of a day and basically uh, you arrive late at night back at Jahaka Anchorage um, both ships have to anchor um, just outside the cove and then you take rowboats to get back onto the dock so if anyone wants to take a short rest you can but you're expecting to probably go to sleep soon and you're going to set out the next morning um but when you guys return um it is it is dark it's night time and uh hugh and dragon mate come to meet you guys and uh you can tell them what happened and whatnot gah hey hugh says he comes running over ah looks like you've all got both your limbs. That's more than I can say. <laughs> How did it go then? You're all looking like you're in one piece. Pretty well indeed. We got them. Excellent. Does that mean that we're heading off in the morning? Because the food here, quite frankly, it tastes like ass. And I've tasted some ass before and it's, it's badass. It's not even good, ask you. Aye. Well, it depends a bit on when they get the ships ready. Captain of the room says, Ah, uh, yeah, about that, eh? The Emerald Eye is, uh, she ain't going anywhere. But, 
Bosco here will be happy to volunteer to take the dragon thing where you want to go. Is that all right with you? That's fine. Sure. You keep the weapons. And there's uh, there's someone else I want you to meet. Heh. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. And uh, you did like the. They took about like eight rowboats over to the anchorage, and you guys were pretty much the last to leave. And uh, you're uh, you're taken to the Sturge, this small cutter here, and uh, everyone's kind of dispersed. Most people have hit Bosco's bilge at this stage. So everyone's like inside that tavern, and it's just you lot around here, uh, dragon bait and Hugh are finding somewhere to sleep. So uh, Avon, Petra have gone to bed, Yazo's gone to bed, Ragd has gone to bed, <laughs> and all the sailors have hit the bilge. They've uh, only been at sea for one day, and already they're looking to uh, hit the piss. It's like they've just been, they've just got back on land. There's someone else uh, <clears throat> gonna be the the first mate for your voyage. You're gonna want to meet him. Follow me, and he takes you down into one of the oh. into the sturge. <clears throat> you head Interesting. along the pier, along this little wooden boardwalk. Now, uh. Have you heard stories of famous pirates before? Other than, of course, myself, the head cutter. No, not really. Well, this uh, you. this man, Captain. Oh. <laughs> I can't say I've heard of that one, but this man. He's got quite the reputation. He was a, a famous pirate captain. He had captured that many ships that he summoned an entire fleet, commanded it without ever taking out a single life from this world. So much that he grew tired of his position of captain of the fleet and he's taken a step back to become first mate. He prefers not having the responsibilities. He's known for having many crossbows, many blades at his disposal at any one time. Do you know who I'm talking about? It starts with black. Anyone? Nope. Black, nope. black, 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 black sheep? No. No, 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 no. His name. And he opens the door and you just see the small office here with that gladiator sitting there. Is black. Balls. The famous Captain Black Balls. You look a lot like this guy I know. And uh, you see the, uh, the Dwar Cholton Gladiator. <sighs> That's what they all say. Listen. I don't know you, and you don't know me. But I, I, got, I have my name for a reason. Do you know why they call me Black Bulls? Do you want us to guess from the yeah, guess? because down there's black. Severe gonorrhea. What? On a scale never before seen. <laughs> no! Because I... If you always burn your meatballs? What? No! That's a good guess. The, 
the opposite of a blue waffle. No! Oh, Jesus. It's because when I was brung into this world, I was in unfortunate circumstances. I was sold as a slave to be a gladiator in the Port Nine Zaru Coliseum. But I earned my freedom and became a pirate, commanded many fleets. But uh, one name that stuck with me is Black Balls, and that's because uh, when I was in the Coliseum, I was facing my enemy. I was fighting lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. And I was surrounded. This giant man, the size of an ogre, could have even beaten an ogre, staring me down. Giant spear in his hand, about to thrust it straight into me. You know what I did? No. I took my hand. And I put it on some goat droppings that were nearby, and I threw it in his face. He got startled and fell in on his own spear. Cut him straight through his neck. Ever since then, they have called me Black Balls. Because goat droppings are like Black Balls. Clever. Great story. <laughs> Jasmine just looks at him disgustingly. Listen, are you going to get us to the island we need to get to? You're damn right I'm going to get us there. I'm stepping out of first mateship to be the captain of the Emerald Eye. Got it? You'll do as I sure. say. And be warned, I always keep some goat droppings handy. I don't want no mutinies or nothing. I will use them. <laughs> You actually got goat shit on you. Well, yes. Aren't we going to use the dragon fang? Oh yeah, that's what I meant. The dragon fang. <laughs> What's this ship called again? <laughs> you know you're... <laughs> I'm an experienced captain. <laughs> I thought this was your first day being captain. <laughs> I used to be a captain. And then I retired. And by the way... Who owns that goat? That's my goat. Well, uh, thank you. Proof not to say it. All I want to say is thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he taps this like leather satchel that he has on his side. Solid. Ah, <laughs> uh, guys, was, our guy was in the stockyard, just uh, supplying you with your special weapon, eh? <laughs> Jasmine laughs nervously. Yeah, the goat comes with us. But we don't sail. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you it's realize the how you've just given this man. <laughs> the only thing holding him back was a lack of a goat. <laughs> you can cast blindness now with a goat. It's like <laughs> Ragnar <the> plus goat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh... Alright, everyone take a long rest. You guys can uh, head back to Bosco's Bilge and uh, rest up. And the next morning, you guys can head out, row over to the Dragon Fang, and get ready to set sail. Ugh. Finally. Oh, yeah, I also hand them um, the um, uh, leather armor that I was. Using. <laughs> they Should let you see these? just keep it for a good job. Okay. I can't remember. But I know we asked if they sold anything, but that was back when they were doing the whole front of a trading. You reckon if we ask again, they might have <laughs> some magic items they can throw at us for money? Oh, they just definitely, a crumb of magic items. They definitely won't have magic items for sale. Yeah, they um. The stuff they smuggle is like trade goods, silk, 
and the brandy and things like that. I'm just asking for a crumb set. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> Most uh, places don't even sell uh, scrolls. Uh, I mean, most places only sell scrolls and potions, at the very least. Uh, there are some magic items for purchase in Port Nye and Zaru. Um, but uh, go ahead and make a persuasion check, Millhouse. Um, you talk to one of the... Uh, you talk to the captain, and uh, he says, Yeah, I'll, I'll see what's in the warehouse. Usually I, we... So. Uh, we ain't really selling stuff like this to you guys, but it's more... Uh, Wholesale, if you know what I mean. I'm sorry to do this. I gotta go for ten minutes, real quick. I'll be back soon. Okay. I was literally just about to tell you what he can sell you, but okay. <laughs> well, he's going off to go meet with the captain, I guess. Can I get some arrows, if that's possible? Just I'm running low. Yeah, they'll give you a quick yeah. quiver of arrows. They will charge you. And that's literally just coming from their own, like, weaponry. Um, that costs Great. one gold piece. Sold. For how many? Twenty. A quiver. Okay. Sweet. Alright, uh, so the next morning you've got Bosco. I also bought a quiver as well, so, yeah. Yeah, they can let you stock up on some small supplies like that. Alright, it's the next morning, you guys are all rested and you're coming back to the rowboats or down the pier and you're about to set sail. Most of the crew are already on the ship. You're going to take a crew of 20 sailors, plus uh, Black Balls is going to uh, be the captain, Bosco is going to be the first mate, um, Hugh can be the bosun, Dragonbait can be the surgeon, and uh, you guys uh, can just be like soldiers aboard. I'm going to say that Avon and uh, Yazo and Petra are just uh, working in the kitchen. They're going to be the cooks. Sounds good. Hope they cook better than they do uh, at this ship on uh, dry land. <laughs> I would hope so. Alright, without uh, further ado, um, you guys are not really wanting to hang around because there is a time crunch. Um, so it's day, day 65. And finally, you're, you you stock up on water and food and stuff like that. They, uh, well, you've got enough rations for day 105. I'll just go over to this like landing page again so you guys can see the situation. Um, so you've got uh, it's day 65. Um, they do warn you that uh, you're looking at some uh, some severe drought according to their uh, meteorologists. Which is basically uh, some like druids using uh, spells to predict the weather. But it's looking like it's not going to rain. However, this ship, they have enough food and water for 100, 100 days at least. So your journey aboard the ship is not going to deplete any of your resources. You don't have to use insect repellent or anything like that because you're out in the ocean now. You're not trekking through the jungle. So it's, it's quite, uh, quite a good boost there in that regards. All right, uh, so you, know, you can see all the statistics there of whatnot. So, you guys are uh, back out in the open sea. Let's go over to the map. All right, the, uh, you've got the, the first mate, the quartermaster, all the officers taking care of the operations of the ship. So you guys don't have to worry about like getting lost or anything like that. Um, it's just uh, a matter of you guys telling them where you want to go. The sailing ship can cover 96 miles a day, so we'll round it up to 100. That's 10 hexes per day. Um, and you're starting, obviously, at Jahak Anchorage. Well, we I guess we tell them that we want to go to this island that we think is Omu. We don't tell, we never say the word Omu, at least I try not to, but we'll... Hmm. We would just want to get to this island as fast as possible. I don't even think I know the name yet, so I won't say the name. <laughs> this is supposedly where the source of the death curse is, but you can presume that the party share all that information with you. Yeah. I'll still not say the name. 
I'm not sure how much you've uh, learned from the other party members, but uh, basically they saw they met with this um, this wise oracle that said that uh, this fallen paladin called Razni has uh, commanded an army of undead in this ancient city called Omu and is supposedly responsible for the death curse. All right, right. Okay. yeah, I, think I, I heard about that. Yeah. Alright, the quartermaster plots the course and says it's going to be five days to get there. Great. Accounting for... Uh, should be good weather as well, what, as far as I can tell. Ice winds as well? Yeah. That accounts for um, not having uh, the wind on your side some days and then having the wind go with your sails on others. All right, the um, yeah, they've they've repaired, they've like, they've worked tirelessly to patch up the sails a bit, but you can tell that the um, the dragon fang is not in the best condition, but uh, still it's sailable, and uh, you guys leave, and uh, the pirates are happy to wash their hands of you guys. All right, so you're going ten hexes in one day. This is way quicker than trekking through the jungle. It's been a very long journey. All right, you sail through the morning, through the afternoon, and through the night, and it's smooth sailing. The whole day goes by, and you've you've done a hundred miles. Is this faster than flying was? Yeah, hundred miles a day. Dang. You're going um, I think you're going like thirty miles a day with flying pushing yourselves all right day 66 of the adventure and uh, this is not depleting any of your resources as well uh, you know I don't have any encounters out at sea and uh, well you haven't had any at least all right uh, next day so morning what does that ship right what was his name again the brazen pegasus right uh, it's, yeah, can we? Yeah. So I was gonna ask, can we? Uh, can we specifically keep an eye out for that ship while we're? I mean, I assume we're doing nothing important while we're just waiting around the ship. Can we just keep an eye out? Oh yeah, you would. Um, you can see for about uh, thirty miles in every direction, and if you spot a ship, unless you're coming around a corner like this, you would you would see it. Um, if you see it, well. You're not going to be able to outrun this brazen Pegasus, but they don't have the firepower to take you guys out from what Captain Zerum says. They could chase you. Got it. But, uh, yeah. Your weapons are still intact, right? Yeah, yep. Your weapons are intact. No weapons on the Emerald Eye. That's another reason why they didn't take it, but deep down you think Captain Zerum just didn't want to let you guys on his ship. Makes sense. Regardless, like whether the weapons were broken or not, you don't think he was going to let you guys. That was never part of his plan. But anyway, um, yeah, the lookout. There's a lookout that uh, you know they sit in the crow's nest um, with a spyglass. So someone's doing that always. Just wanted to make sure we're covered. Oh yeah, of course. They there's a fully competent crew of sailors as well, mind you. All right, the weather's been good. It's dry and sunny and morning noon afternoon and night goes by smooth sailing there's no uh i, I want to inspire the the crew uh occasionally to uh well work better or just be happy and make some music being a bard okay you can uh you can do that you will be stepping on the first mate's toes though Who is Bosco Daggerhand, the guy that, that kind of runs Bosco's build, the one that was like deposed and whatnot. Uh, so I'm not really scared about that. Alright. Make a persuade a performance check. Alright, uh, as everyone's gathered around for dinner and the cooks have produced uh, this meal, which uh, sustains everyone. As you're sailing, Bryn, uh, after dinner you play this beautiful song. Are you doing uh, like a singing or instrument or something? 
I'll use my instruments uh, mainly just to maybe some dancing. All right, you actually uh, managed to uh, really inspire the crew and uh, the quality of the, the crew's morale um, or the quality of the crew and the crew's morale has been lifted and uh, people are starting to talk about uh, having you at, on as first mate permanently and uh, basically throwing Bosco overboard. And uh, he doesn't really take kindly to that, but he just kind of grumbles and he's already been humbled by everyone basically saying that uh, he's nothing more than a glorified ale master. So um, you're starting to like, you know, persistence like this could uh, cause like a mutiny or something like that. Um, but you, you, you've got the crew in high hopes. It's very effective. Unfortunately, you're not expecting to stay, stay on the ship more than five days, so you may not be able to take no. that year off. Nope. But I thank them. Alright, but uh, yeah, you're treated very kindly by the, the crew, and you feel like maybe now, uh, if things did go down, you might actually have the crew kind of get your back. Alright, it's day 67. No. And uh, if you're not like fully rested up, then you should be. You should have all your hit dice and everything back. And it's nice to get that jungle stench off of you. And uh, even the humidity is not really too bad. And uh, there's like beautiful outside. Um, you guys I don't really stop to like go swimming or anything like that because you're just sailing. But it's nice to have that sea breeze and it's a lot cooler off the coast here. So it's a welcome change for everyone. And uh, <clears throat> another day goes by. All right, this morning, uh, oof, when you wake up, the captain's yelling out, Blackwell's yelling out, everyone up here, look. And it's pissing with rain for starters, which is unusual because it's the dry season, but it still rains. It's absolutely hammering down and uh, there is a wild storm brewing but it's off in the horizon but it's 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 off to the south about 30 miles to the south here in this region i'll put like a green circle on the map around here there's like a storm and uh it's coming towards us or moving in any way Sorry, what's that? Is the storm moving in any way, or is it staying at, um, in place? You look out to the horizon, and uh, basically there's just massive dark storm clouds, and it's it's starting to pelt down, and it's becoming quite foggy. Um, but you're basically, uh, if you keep on sailing this direction, you're going to be sailing into the storm. Um, Black Balls is talking to the quartermaster. All the officers are gathered around in his office and whatnot. And uh, it's starting to thunder and storm. It's like not that dark yet outside. But you feel the thunder just shake the entire ship. Ah, shit. We're going to have to take a detour. Looks like Do we, have to? we might lose a day. What do you mean, do we have to? You know well, why this is called the Wild Coast? Please, no Yes, if it's no right. Wild? Yeah, because it's wild. It's not just that. You know, uh, now this is just a story. I don't want to spook anyone, but... They say, uh... When the second, second sundering happened... After the spell plague, the weather around these parts, well, they got fused with, with the weave, with the arcane weave. You know, winds and, and towering waves, they can toss ships like bath toys. A snowstorm can batter a vessel. Hurricane can, can shoot my whole armada. There are sea monsters, but storms 
are more common and far deadlier. But that's not the biggest threat on the high seas. You see, uh, they say the storms around here, they're wild magic storms, infused with arcane energy. <laughs> I heard someone yeah, sailed let's go into around. one. Ended up on the other side of Cholt two hours later. What? <laughs> That's bad. Yep. Let's not go. Let's not dust it. Oh. But, uh. I thought you wanted to sail into it. Yeah, not anymore. Nope. We're good. Thanks. You were scared of a magical storm? Fighting desire to prove masculinity. I heard a. Uh, I don't think you got much of that left, buddy. You might want to keep it in reserve for when you really need it. <laughs> I heard one story about this other storm that was infused with enchantment magic, disarmed the entire crew's sense of danger, enthralling them, causing them to jump overboard. Every single last crew member, until there's nothing more than a skeleton ship drifting away at sea. Listen, these right. are great ghost stories. All I care about is getting to this goddamn island as fast as possible. If the storm's as dangerous as you say, we can lose a day. But we need to be all the faster tomorrow. <laughs> yep. I'm just shitting you. They're just some stories that we tell to scare new sailors. We're gonna sail around this bad boy, and we'll be fine. We'll just add another day onto our journey, alright? Okay. <laughs> you think I'm scared of some storm? We got five yes. pounds of goat shit here. <laughs> alright. Somewhere below deck, the, the goat bars. Alright, you guys start to, uh... The quartermaster plots a different course, and you guys are just gonna sail around the storm. However, the lookout yells out Enemy ship spotted! West! Southwest! And uh, you look over, and about uh, 20 miles to the west is the brazen pegasus. Shit! Ah. But it, it's like very far away, you'd only see it. Just a ship with a looking glass. Ah, oh, damn it. And then he's like talking to all the officers and you guys are in the captain's office and whatnot. How'd it get so close? <laughs> It's, it's not, it's, well, it's 20 miles away. They must have, uh, skirted around. They must have skirted around from the bay. And, uh, there is a bay nearby where they could have easily, uh, been obscured from some of the mountains and whatnot. Ah, uh, they've come around flanking us from Shilku Bay. Shit. I knew they may be hiding there. Captain! It's bad! Ten more fleets! A fleet is spotted! Ten more ships! They don't look Cholton! The captain, Black Bulls, takes a spyglass. Shit. They look like Amnion vessels. Damn it. This is not good. Can we outrun them? Ah. <sighs> It doesn't look like it. They've got us surrounded. There's a full armada. Uh, that bastard. Captain Autome. He must have told the Amnian naval crew of our location. Uh, the Flaming Fist must have something to do with this as well. I know that Baldur's Gate and Am have always been at ends, but... Ah, oh, shit. They probably want to seize our entire operation. The what captain the thinks for a bit. 
and uh, you guys are just sitting in this office. It's like your typical kind of captain's office. There's like a large desk and nautical charts all over the walls. And uh, you guys are just standing around. Into, uh, into the storm with his fleet? No, nah, there's, there's no way they'll take it into the storm. So we're going to be safe in the storm from them, right? <sighs> I didn't want to have to say it, but I think that might be our only option. Even if we could get through a few ships, we don't know how many more is waiting on the horizon. And that fog. There could be at least a dozen more ships surrounding us. And the brazen Pegasus. She'll be on our tail. We're gonna have to go into the storm. Plot a course! For the storm! Full speed ahead! Old man on deck! Raise the sails! I want people rowing. But, but Captain, you've gone mad. I was already mad! Onward! Oh no, he started eating the shit. Oh, <laughs> this is terrible. Alright, you guys uh, look up ahead and you just see this ferocious storm. is brimming with ghostly howls and whirls of wind as you look up to the sky you swear that uh, the dark clouds above you as uh, the, the storm's about to consume you takes the shape of what looks like a giant skull with its open maw about to envelop the entire ship and uh, this dark cloud just whoosh, washes over you all that might just be a, a good sign for a pirate ship, right? I played Sea of Thieves. This is only good things coming up. Well, let's stay positive anyway. Right, all of a sudden, it kind of uh, comes very still as you sail through the storm, and it's pitch black. The occasional crackle of thunder. This is the only real noise in this vicinity. And uh, there's also a thick fog surrounding you. Right, does anyone not have dark vision? I think everyone's got dark vision here. Okay. I know here being a dwarf has a uh, has the dark vision. Alright, it's it's quiet. Too quiet. And uh, all, right, all of the crew uh, have gone below decks. There's just a skeleton crew sailing the ship. And uh, Black, Bulls, Black Bulls commands everyone, get below deck. You all, stay up here. And Black Bulls strikes a torch. <laughs> and he starts looking around. You hear all these ghostly howls of wind washed by you. Huh! Huh! Black Bulls is looking around nervously. And uh, suddenly uh, a line of rain <laughs> assaults the ship, <laughs> spraying everyone. Ah! Ah! Damn! As a wave also calls around the hull. Then uh, the rain stops. And the thunder stops. And you just hear this howl of wind. And then... Uh, Is this the eye of the storm? We might very well be in the eye of the storm. Everyone. Keep your eyes to the waterline. You don't know what... Foul creations will come about. From this storm. Alright, Hugh's gonna be below deck as well. And uh, Bosco's gonna be below deck at this stage. So it's basically you guys and Dragon Bait. And Black Balls. Even Rector's gone below deck. And uh, everyone's uh, taking a look around. Everyone make a perception check at disadvantage because 
it's pitch black. It's not the uh, the ocean that you guys are worried about. <laughs> Another spray of water comes screaming down on the ship and you look up and being brung in with the rain are skeletons. It's a necromatic storm and <laughs> that rain washes down four skeletons. Four single skeletons, they just come screaming down, roll along the deck of the ship, and jump to their feet, wielding short swords in their hands, bits of armor scraps, and detritus, and uh, it looks like seaweed and barnacles attached to their frail looking bones, and uh, one giant big jumble of skeletons, which basically looks like uh, about 20 skeletons, all grabbing onto their arms and legs like a giant cannonball <laughs> splashes onto the deck as well skeletal juggernaut so let's roll initiative and uh, no crew operating the ship for this battle all right this this crackling juggernaut that's assembled of all the many different Parts. It's like this an oversized bipedal assembly of bones um, that is basically losing portions of its mass as it moves around. The skeleton's like falling off of it and whatnot. Um, it's still somewhat held together. And uh, basically, as it hits the deck, it, it, it collapses into a large heap. It just spills out. And that's going to spill out uh, on Millhouse Dragon Bait and the Steel Defender. And this thing is like a swarm, so it can enter creatures' spaces and vice versa. Okay, so uh, as it as it sprays down there, you'd actually get an attack of opportunity, Jasmine. And that hits. Alright, you, you swing the short sword through the skeletal juggernaut and uh, you manage to uh, just kind of break through a couple of small bones. Alright, when this thing smashes onto the deck like this and collapses, a Bryn and uh, everyone underneath needs to make a dexterity saving throw. So, Millhouse still defend a dragon bait, Bryn deck saves and uh it doesn't affect the other skeletons they just like get like you know almost converged in with the swarm all right let me do the dragon baits Alright, so as this thing like smashes onto the deck, uh, Bryn, you take 19 bludgeoning damage and you're knocked prone. Millhouse, you take 19 bludgeoning damage and you're knocked prone. The thing basically lands on top of you guys from flying through the air with the storm. Uh, the Still Defender takes 19 bludgeoning damage, is knocked prone, and Dragon Bait kind of braces. He doesn't get knocked over, but he does take a bit of damage. And because these other skeletons fell down with it, like they're not getting affected by it. All right, dragon bait like jumps out of this big conglomeration of bones and uh, just <laughs> strafes his sword at the skeleton. And dragon bait actually, um, he smells like ham. And you know that uh, he's nervous. Whenever he smells like ham, he's nervous. He, uh... He swings. <laughs> Radiant energy is like... Dancing up and down his blade. And he managed to take out one skeleton.
All right, this skeleton uh, that has come down, brung in with the storm, just starts poking at the still defender with its short sword. And it hits for seven piercing damage. See all these gangly skeletons. Uh, here's a handout for them. They look exactly like that. Orion. Uh, I'll rage first off. Um, and then I'll down to the skeleton. Uh, I'll grow my claws out this time. And I'll, uh, I'll recklessly attack. Hit. <laughs> you uh, slash through the skeleton, breaking away some rib bones and whatnot. And it's a narrow miss. It bounces off its armor scraps. And that hits. You just grab the skeleton and just <laughs> rip it apart, rip its spine out, and pull it into pieces. Uh, and then I'll use the last of my movement to move up here with Jasmine. Jasmine. Yeah, I just pull out my sword, sword and uh, go ham at the skeleton. Hit. The short sword breaks through some pieces of the skeleton. Yeah, it's looking damaged. You hit it again. And you smash the blade through some more rib bones. The skeleton's almost destroyed. Alright, coming in for a dread ambusher. Or is that your bonus action attack? Dread ambusher? Alright, that ex yeah. explodes the skeleton. The force damage just poof, sends bits of splintered bone flying everywhere all over the deck. Did you want to uh, use your bonus action attack, or just happy doing one-handed fighting? Yeah, I'm just happy doing one-handed fighting for now. Okay. All right, Bryn. This thing is basically just uh, landed on top of you, like from the sky, knocked you to the ground, and you can use half your movement speed to stand up. Yeah, I'll stand up. And I'll do uh, another shatter uh, located there, I think. Wait, uh, Orion is now there, maybe. With there, then? Okay. I think. That will uh, damage the ship a little bit, too. Right. I think I can choose to exclude stuff, right? No, not with that spell. Okay. But uh, you would, uh, yeah, you'd hit the juggernaut, the skeleton, and you'd do a little bit of damage to the hull. Okay, I think we'll be fine. Hopefully. Go for it. Alright, the... the... The lone skeleton is just ripped apart. <laughs> Bits of bones break away everywhere. The juggernaut... It uh, it does resist. Still, the thunderous energy breaks through a heap of bones and kind of like one skeleton out of this big jumble of them is destroyed. And uh, the ship will make a con save. I'll take care of the ship's con save. See how well it can deal with the thunder damage. It has disadvantage because it's an uh, object. So, I mean, 13 damage, it doesn't really damage the hull that much. A few bits of splintered wood fly up into the air. Right. So I I think I'm considered in range of the uh, juggernaut, so I will stay in place to not provoke an attack of opportunity. Okay. Um, no bonus action. Uh, I could inspire someone, right? Because that's not a spell, so I could do that. Do yeah. that. Uh, I'll uh, I'll inspire Millhouse because he's next to me. And I'll uh, just say, well, I uh, <clears throat> I used some thunder 
Now, do you do your thunder or something like that? I don't know. Not really good at that, but you know, whatever. He's in stride. Very right. Words of an angel. And uh, right, that'll be the end of your turn. At right, Millhouse, this thing has just landed on you like a giant cannonball flying out of the sky. It's kind of uh, <clears throat> collapsed into a, a large heap and then quickly reformed. And uh, you can use half your movement speed to stand up. Which I will do. Alright, clawing your way out of the skeletons, they don't attack you or anything. You're able to get out of out of there without getting hurt. They're still busy kind of forming themselves together. And branding smoke. Let's see if I hit oh, yeah. I'm attacking the big ball. Mess. And that hits. <laughs> a massive line of radiant energy surrounds the scimitar, cutting through the skeletal juggernaut, and you destroy two skeletons in that jumble. Doggo will move up, and he will stand up, and then he will heal. Black balls. He uh, says, "Ha! Ah, I got this." And uh, he reaches into his pouch, and he produces his secret weapon. And he throws it at the skeletal juggernaut. <laughs> he uh, tries to throw them. And uh, he hesitates. As he, he takes all these goat droppings, he reels back his arm. And then uh, he's about to throw them and then he stops. And he holds the goat droppings uh, close to his face. <laughs> and he inhales. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> These are the people you meet in Chult. All right, uh, <laughs> the the skeletal juggernaut now. This like wild ball of skeletons starts spinning around, and uh, it's like swinging whole skeletons at you guys um, from its form. And the skeletons that are being swung have their claws bared. Going to claw at Dragon Bait, and Dragon Bait's hit. Dragon bait takes a bit of a scratch and then going to claw at Millhouse. Yeah, 13 damage doesn't hurt Dragon bait shield. too bad. Millhouse uses shield. Alright, Millhouse, you cast shield and those claws are just going to bounce straight off of you. And, alright, the Juggernaut is also like, as it does that, it's actually falling apart. And, it, like, it's taking damage. Bits of Bone are just falling off of it constantly. Dragon bait just uh, woof, woof, makes two really quick attacks with his Holy Avenger, and just uh, starts breaking through the skeleton. He uh, he does quite a lot of damage. His glowing longsword is just destroying, he destroys two skeletons from that bunch, and there's about six left now. Orion. Oh, reckless again, and we'll just go to town. Hit. You slash through him. Break away another skeleton. That's another hit. You start to work on another one, just 
clipping through bone, ribs, skulls, femurs. Femurs. And uh, you just keep on ripping more bones out of this big pile. It's looking kind of destroyed. Jasmine. Yeah, I um, move up and I say to Orion, let's do this thing. And as I pull out my other sword and go ham at the juggernaut. Crap. All right, you do. You just smash the short sword straight through one of the skeleton skulls, breaking it into pieces. Reel back the short sword and you hit again. And the blade. And in, incoming offhand. Hit. You break through even more bones, and this thing is just already collapsing. Brent. I'll be very piratey and take out my rapier and start hitting the, well, bull of uh, skeletons. It messes, and you're, you go to just poke your rapier, and then your hand just gets, like, flicked backwards, deflected away. Um, I'll uh, heal myself with the word of uh, well, like to to uh, try to keep myself from not being too scared. You can do this, and I'll do a healing word on myself. Right, some of these uh, bruises and whatnot that you suffered from when the thing fell on you have to go away. And I think that's it for my turn. Millhouse. All right. Uh, another branding smite. Big damage on that one. Uh, let's see, scimitar. Good hit. <laughs> you strafe the blade through the swarm again and uh there's like literally just two skeletons holding onto each other's arms and legs rolling around there um just uh keeping together this big ball of giant bones it's just a big mass of random bones i'm gonna use uh body inspiration that's a d8 is it the scroll off and read it uh yeah i think i think it is 10 minutes, creature can roll. A D level 5, I think it's a D. Yeah, it's D6. D6 still. Are you guys seeing light off this guy's token, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. good. Just want to check. It's not showing that you guys are. It's a, it's a D8 at 5th level. Oh, D8? Okay. Yeah. Hit. For nine damage. All right, this thing's about to collapse. Can dog finish it off? No. He misses. No dog can. He uh, tries to bark and bite into the swarm, but misses. All right. Uh, oops. All right. Black Bulls is going to. Uh... Yes. Now is the time. Ah! And he throws the goat droppings into the skeletal juggernaut directly hitting like filling one of the hollow cavities of one of the skulls and it just doesn't affect them whatsoever how can this be it's not so lucky <laughs> dragon bait 
he uh, very casually just <laughs> pushes his Holy Avenger into the skeletal juggernaut. When that happens, the two skeletons that are keeping this entire bunch together, they break apart and the entire thing collapses once more. And uh, as the remains disassemble, they reassemble as another wave of water washes over this necromatic storm. And 12 skeletons rise from its remains. They just spread out everywhere. Uh, Oh dear. They uh, they fall apart so like people are getting squeezed in. Sorry, I'm just uh, gonna fix up this ship's token. But uh, yeah, you've got like one on you, Bryn, one on the still defender, Millhouse, you've got one next to you, and Dragon Bait's got one next to him. So they they spill out, squashing people up and whatnot. And uh, Dragon Bait's squeezing now, um, so he attacks at disadvantage. But he tries to take out the skeleton that's like basically fallen, risen up next to him, and he cuts through it, destroying it. Orion. I'll hit this one uh, right in front of me. Uh, recklessly, still. Hit. You break through some bones. Hit. And you just rip another skeleton apart, pulling it into pieces and throwing them overboard. Uh, and then I'll do the one in front of Jasmine. That hits. You almost take out the skeleton with a single swipe. Jasmine. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna attack the one in front of me with my short sword. That's a narrow miss. The skeleton parries you with its own bony short sword. Now uh, going in again. Hit. Alright, you catch the better of it and uh, you break away a couple more bones, but it's still standing. Hmm. Offhand. And it's a mess. The skeleton mm. parries you. Bryn. Alright, you're squeezed at the moment, so any attack you do will, will be at disadvantage. Your, and attacks on you will have advantage. It's, you don't have enough room to move around effectively. Right. So, so that will also count for spell casting, right? If it's an attack roll, yeah. If it's a saving throw spell, it's not affected. Okay. Um, let me see. Is Cloud of Daggers a saving throw spell? I think Cloud of Daggers, they don't even get a save, it just straight up does the damage to them. Yeah, right. Well, within the range of the spell, you can uh, cast it anywhere on the boat, like up behind you, next to Black Balls, or next to Dragon Bait and I, or in the middle of the skeletal crowd. Yeah, I think next to me is a lot of skeletons, right? So if I would do it here... It only takes up one square. So which, which one do you want to choose? A cube, it's five a cube, 5-foot cube. It's, uh, okay. Okay, I'll just take out one. Um, you can also, like, push creatures into it. and. Oh, right, it says active. Okay, yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, that one sounds uh, great. Let's do that. Right there? Okay. Alright, heap of whirring daggers start spinning in that in that place and uh yeah if they enter it so if they're pushed into it or they start their turn there they take the damage so at the start of that skeleton's turn it'll take that seven damage right uh i don't think i really can move 
you, ha you yeah. have to move if you're able to because you can't willingly end your turn in another creature's space so you're basically right. forced to try and climb up there with an athletic check okay sounds fair which uh, is uh, it's not going to be nice so you actually kind of want to fail this but you don't really have a choice oh, wow. <clears throat> all right you attempt to climb up but the skeletons just push you against the wall and you're not able to move uh so actually sorry you have to move here uh no absolutely no you can't the skeletons don't let you go by you're stuck you're stuck in that yep. space i guess so okay well um just in case do uh no wait i can't do that uh i can do no i don't think i can do anything i could um i could still do a bardic inspiration right yeah um well, I'll just say to Orion, because he's raging and, like, really going for it. You go, big fella. And uh, Yeah, right. Do a bardic inspiration on him. Let's check how many of them I have. Charisma mod. All right, so four. Yeah. Okay, well, then I still have two left. Okay, that's it. End of turn. Millhouse. Millhouse is back up to bat. Alright. Uh. If you try to get through the skeleton, it just blocks uh, you. Stops you from night, getting through its space. Yeah. It stands in your way, holding its arms out. I want to leave the bone zone. You could go past dragon bait, right? Yeah, you can go through his space. Or you can jump overboard. <laughs> I'll do some quick measuring. Go there. I think that's enough. Yeah, that's 25. Yep. Right, here come the three attacks at advantage as you're squeezed in. Yeah, right. Firstly, um, my shield's ready. And uh, you get poked. No, no shield. No, shield. Okay, no. you cast shield. You All blocked a 20. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> All right, uh, then you have to squeeze by dragon bait, so this one's going to attack. And uh, that still doesn't get through your shield. And that's it. That you just provoke from those four. Alright. How much is your AC with shield? Uh, 24. Wow. So I don't think many things can hit me unless they get a crit. We'll see about that. Uh, we'll fix that. I said many. I said many. No oh yeah, a lot of these uh, lower creatures have a hard time getting through your armor. Alright. Uh, let's open up, try to open up some room, I guess. That one, I'll be attacking. Miss. And another miss. Skeleton blocks your attacks. All right, sorry, dogs. sorry, I've been counting. That one skeleton has blocked six different attacks on. <laughs> All right. The dog's gonna try to jump up onto the balcony. Alright, I can make an athletic check. Um, because it, it would be very difficult, that's gonna be disadvantage. That'd be very hard for the dog to climb up there. So, something might happen here. The boat's. Alright, never mind. I grabbed the boat by <laughs> mistake. Alright. Uh, athletics. It doesn't really have, like, uh, the proper appendages for climbing. Dog okay. doesn't get, dog does not give a shit. It uh, okay. It kind of uh, yeah. It just leaps. It just jumps straight up, jumps up, puts its metallic paws onto the railing and leaps over like that, provoking from two skeletons. These two, these two guys down here. They're both going to poke at the still defender at advantage, and still defenders hit for three piercing. I 
and he'll fourth rend the one that was in his spot. Okay, there's going to be three quarters cover because he's really kind of leaning over trying to get through the railing. And... I, I believe. Mm -hmm. It'd just be a, bit, a little bit difficult, that's all. And he's a good boy, but he just bites the railing instead. Thinks it's a my a bone. My belief remains strong. <sighs> Black Balls just says, uh, no, it can't be. It can't be. No, no, no. No. And he fully goes into denial that his goat droppings don't work and he just curls up into a ball. They had a DC of 12. Get over yourself. He sits down. He put, He wraps his arms around his knees and he sinks his head into his knees. <laughs> just like completely gives up. All right, the skeletons all go now. They go on the jug, juggernauts initiative. Just giving their reactions back to themselves. And so uh, one of the nice damage. Yeah. This one takes that seven damage straight away. Alright, now uh They have short swords, quotation marks, which are basically just like spikes of bone. And uh, they're just gonna start whacking the people. Uh, this one will attack you, Bryn. It has advantage because you're squeezed. And well, good thing it has advantage. It uh yeah, yeah the better. other skeleton basically just holds you and ah, the stabs this spiky bone into you for eleven piercing damage straight into your leg. Okay. This one attacks Dragon Bane. And that misses. This one on you, Bryn, struggles to try and attack you at disadvantage, plus at advantage because you're squeezed together. It's in close proximity. And that one that uh, was holding you, he also stabs a sharp piece of bone into you for five piercing. He then try has to like exit that space, so uh, he uh, he'll move like this. This one will attack Dragon Bait, miss. This one will attack Jasmine, and oof, the crits are real. It hits you for five piercing damage, Jasmine just jamming a sh like kind of like a dagger almost a sharp piece of bone into your arm this one will try to attack doggo back same thing three quarters cover miss this one will go for Bryn, and that misses this one will go for milhow uh, orion sorry and orion you'll hit for three piercing this one will attack milhouse and the final, the 12th skeleton attacks the steel defender. And that misses. So he's just a big volley of bones being stabbed. Weapons are clashing everywhere. Dragon bait continues to try to uh, cut through these skeletons. And this one is absolutely destroyed. <laughs> it turns into a fiery ash from the long sword. He steps up and he looks at Bryn. And... Uh, when he, he looks at you, he smells like honeysuckle, which means concern. And uh, he sees that one that um, is hold, kind of holding you and stabbing you, and he tries to cut through that one. And how many crits was that as well? <laughs> so many. <laughs> he just destroys that skeleton next to you, Bryn. Tries to interpose himself a little bit more. Oh, yeah. thank you, doggy. He... He smells like brimstone, which is confusion when you say that. I was not uh, the dog that did this. No, this is dragon bait. Dragon bait, some. Um... Oh, right, sorry. You don't really know what. <laughs> he does seem confused I when you call him doggy. Prayer now, yeah. so I don't really get what's happening. You're not really sure what race this guy is. He kind of looks dragonbornish, but this is dragon bait. Anyway, so. Friend of the right. parties. The guy who was captured yeah. by the pirate. Yeah, I knew who he was. I thought the dog was uh, helping me out, the uh, steel defender. Yeah. Alright, uh, uh Ryan. I did not know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll try to attack this invincible skeleton over here. <laughs> That's why Dragon Bait didn't attack this one. <laughs> Recklessly? Yes. 
And finally, you just grab it, uh, take its skull, and just crush it in your hands as hard as you can. That feels good. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'll provoke coming mm -hmm. here. It'll poke. And it crits you for All a right. grand total of three piercing, but stabbing charter bone into you. Uh, and I'll put my next two attacks on uh, the skeleton. Yeah, this one will attack as well. Okay. And miss. Are you? Do you have your shield on still? I do. Yeah. Okay. Miss. That hits, and the skeleton's looking damaged. Seven damage. Right, there's about uh, seven skeletons yeah. left. Yeah, go cross there and attack my sword swords. Hit. The skeleton starts to get broken apart. A good hit. Second one. It's a miss. Offhand. And that's a hit. And you almost break it apart. It's still hanging on. It's gangly form. Brian. So I want to kind of, um, let me see. I'll, I'll mm. How, what does it take to drink a healing potion? Healing is an potion action or is an action. An action. Well, I'll drink one and then I'll do a healing word on myself because that's a bonus action. So I can I can do both, right? Yeah. Because I need some hit points. So I'll do the healing word first because I have that one. Uh, right here. If it works. Right. I'll do it at third level because, well. So that's. Eleven, right? Yeah. You got eleven, and then the healing potion is two d four plus two. Cooked. <laughs> so that's right. 10. Yeah. Good heals. You're feeling a lot better. Yeah, I needed that. Um, right. Uh, that's it, I think. Yeah. Millhouse. Alright. Uh, the one to the right of me. You know what's up? That hits, and the scimitar just breaks the skeleton into pieces. Bits fall overboard, and bits fall onto the deck. And the one to the north? It's a hit, and it's uh, very badly injured. And Dog will attack the one to the left, uh, to the right of him. It jumps on the skeleton, BOOM! <laughs> Breaks away most of his ribs. It's almost destroyed. Black Balls is beside himself. I, I, I don't want I don't, to I don't get it. Use your poo. I, I did everything. I'm nothing without... It doesn't work. I'm no captain. And he's completely beside himself. Alright, uh, Bryn, roll me 44, because this skeleton is getting chewed up at the start of its turn. It didn't take the initiative to move out of the way. I don't even think it could, but anyway. It, it just gets broken apart. Pff, bits of splintered bone fly everywhere. The five remaining right. skeletons 
will all use their short swords. This one will attack down at you, Bryn. You got half cover. It's a miss. This one will attack at Orion. And Orion, you hit for four piercing. This guy is going to attack the Steel Defender. And it buckles a part of the Steel Defender for three piercing. This one attacks Bryn. And Bryn, right. you'll hit for eight piercing. And this one attacks Dragon Bait. And Dragon Bait gets a shard of bone stabbed straight into his neck. But uh, it didn't go in too deep. And he's still standing. Alright, the, the pain from that also caused you to lose your concentration, Bryn. So Cloud of Daggers has gone down too. Yep. Dragon Bait uh, turns to this one. And... Uh, he breaks the skeleton apart with a single hit. And he just absolutely just devastates the shit out of the skeleton for good job. Thirty-three points of damage. The skeleton is vanquished into a fiery ash. And dragon bait. When you tell him good job, he uh, he smells like tar, which is like victory. You've come to kind of know his scent okay. at the stages, and he's. Interesting. Kind of clicking and whistling, and the only one that's really hearing that is uh, the still defender, really. It's very high-pitched. You can see him moving his mouth a little bit. Orion. Uh, reckless Werewolf Claws on the northern one. You just slap that skeleton overboard, breaking into pieces as it falls over. And then the other two on this one. That hits. Break through some more bones. And devastatingly, you just grab the skeleton, sweep up both of its legs, holding them in your hands, pick it up, and just slam it down onto the deck, breaking it into pieces. I love it. A lone skeleton left, which is basically destroyed. Jasmine. Yeah, I move up and uh, yeah, brandishing sword swords in attempt to finish this one off. That the steel defender started off. Mess. Miss. And hit. Are you sword play with the skeleton a little bit? He blocks your first attack, blocks your second attack, and then you just jam the short sword straight, straight through its skull. It breaks apart. And the fight is over. What was that? I guess magic storms aren't such a fairy tale after all. Yeah. Maybe we better go inside. Captain? <sighs> you okay, man? I, I don't know what happened. I'm useless. I don't know why Nobody I came out of retirement. Nobody saw that. We don't know what you're talking about. You saw it. I threw the goat droppings. This is the second fight I've ever had in my life. Uh, well, you win some, so you lose some. The first one was when I gained my freedom against the ogre. Uh, I don't know. I, I always just go to diplomacy first. That's how I managed to command so many fleets. But... The skeletons! They... They didn't even have a ears! <laughs> Are you gonna be okay? Uh, I, uh... 
I think so. I guess the, the worst of the storm is over. Let's just keep on sailing through this and let's just forget that anything happened. Uh, sure. Thank you all. You know what? It's kind of kind of peaceful here now. Listen to the rain, the thunder in the distance. You know what? I think everything is going to be just fine. And then uh, suddenly a dragon turtle zombie rises up from the ground <laughs> and smashes into the hull of the ship. This enormous beast. Right. The size of an ancient dragon. It, uh, it hits the hull with such force that uh, it basically is going to capsize the ship within a matter of 10 seconds. And you guys are all hurled overboard, pff, splashed into the ocean as you see bits of the ship break apart around you. The foam from the ocean, the swell from the storm, and the presence of this dragon turtle zombie pff, sends you all into a blackout. And that's where we'll end today's session. Holy wow. shit! We were doing so well. Yeah, we were. <laughs> that changed quickly. So, would you mind pulling up the hex map before we before we head out? Sure. All right. You guys will be uh, washed ashore, so you're gonna wake up next session. Washed ashore. So we don't have to make new characters? No, we don't have to make new characters. Shipwreck. That's what it's going to be. Man. I think, uh... I didn't want to say this before now, but I think Syndra might be dead, guys. It's going to be a rough distance to travel. Oh, not too bad. We'll see. Who knows where you'll wind up. Yeah. Depends a bit on where. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, since we're not swimming all that way, if we are on the wrong side of the bay, we still have to go all around it, right? Yes. It's going to be rough. So hopefully we'll be at the good side of the bay. Should be back to a, a full crew next week we'll see how you guys uh wind up as this enormous undead dragon turtle just smashes through the ship and you guys uh washed ashore of a shipwreck on the sandy beach most likely you'll have to find out next week